Okay, hey everyone. See, I told you that wouldn't take long. Told you! It wasn't the worst raid in Twitch history. Uh, believe me, I, I'm very aware of, like, uh, how often I lean on the, the, the away from stream stuff. Um, I don't know, it's just, that's just my vibe, I guess. A man likes taking breaks, a man likes getting up and walking around, a man likes getting some water. Uh, just this time I got, since my, for some reason, my stomach has miraculously healed to the point where I can have coffee again. I've been on this shit, which is not G Fuel, even though I have, uh, 30% off code right now, if you want that. Um, you can use the G Fuel command, see, slipped it in there, a little ad messaging. But no, this is protein powder and cold brew coffee. Um... Chocolate protein powder and cold brew. This is the shit that's going to get me jacked up. So, what if the commercial breaks became the content and I was the brace? Only on the Lawrence stream do the lines blur. Only there can a man stream while he's staring out the window for 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've, wa I've wondered about that, actually, though. <sighs> about maybe... Uh -huh. About maybe at a... Bleh. Um, pre creates confusion about what the intended content of the stream is. Uh, especially since they're pretty disparate things. It's called Avatar and Anime. Get on him. I think it, mm, from his perspective, that makes sense. What happened in your IG retrospective video? Couldn't find it. You think there's any hope of the really early stuff seeing the light of day? What do you mean by that? Shinny. IG retrospective video. Uh, is that the one that I edited to launch Inside Gaming? Pieced together from like old Inside Gaming stuff? Is there a separate be right back in MediaTek crew? No. Um, but there could be. Okay, Shinny. Yeah. Um, I put that... I thought I put that on roosterteeth.com. But... I don't know. I don't. It wasn't on YouTube, or was it? Uh, I think it was. Yeah. It's not there anymore. Okay. I don't know, man. They didn't tell me. I I own zero percent of, and have no right to information to anything I made. Because uh, the system's really cool that way. Uh, how are, are you liking this game? I'm almost done and have mixed feelings. I There are things that I really like, and I wish the game focused on those things so much more than it does. Um, so far. I'm still Ellie. I'm in Seattle day two. So, you know. Uh, I'm not very far. I've been taking my time with this game because... I mean... Despite it, it being new, I do enjoy it significantly less than other games that I play. Oh, did I miss Persona? Yeah, sorry. I just I just moved away from Dancing in Starlight. I'll probably go back to that game. It's a, it's a smooth ride. I'll say that. My eyeballs were kind of wrapping around it by the end of it. Oh, title. Whoops. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Rose. Very right to bring that up. Okay, there we go. Thanks for letting me know. Hey, well, wheel. Welcome back. Good to see you. Yeah, Dan, well, I, I just changed it. But thank you for the heads up. Wait, did I already play through this part? Is this the pet shop? It is. Okay. <sighs> Should I assume that everything is looted? Oh, I took it off. I saved. I definitely saved. So I guess I just assumed that it locationally dropped me back uh, at the beginning of the area. But yeah, okay. I think I've, I think I've scraped all the. Uh, oh lord! Must immersion low. Must restore immersion. Okay. I think I have. Yeah, I think I've looted all these areas and killed all these enemies. So. 
What's your favorite instance of zombie apocalypse, be it film, game, or otherwise? My snap answer is Resident Evil 2, the remake. Uh, that game is so effing good. Um, well, let me think about that a little more. Let me, let me, let me ruminate on that. It would probably be a video game, just because I like video games, you know? If I'm going to put a weighted scale on it, video games get bonus points for being video games. Dead Rising is very, is very fun. Um, some of the Dead Rising games are very good. Actually, you know what? No, they've all, they all, all the Dead Rising games have their bright spots. Hmm. Left for Dead. I'm just listing good zombie games now. Uh, I don't know. Like, there was about 15 minutes of real solid enjoyment in Zombieland, the movie, and then the rest of the movie was there, so... I don't know. That 15 minutes of Zombieland was pretty cool. Last Dead Rising kind of sucked. Four? Yeah, it did, kind of. I, I put that up to, like... I put that up to launch launch issues, but it was co-op. So... I was, I was okay with that. I liked the future Im implied by Dead Rising 4, which then didn't happen because it, I guess it didn't sell well. Being a, being a launch exclusive on Xbox One meant your studio was dead. I, like... That, it killed the dead... It killed, uh... Well, I... For me, at least. Rip. It, it put a dent in Somniac. Like, they, they got acquired. If, I, I'm pretty sure if Sunset took off, that would not have happened. But that's just me. Um, yeah. Then I think the studio who made Dead Rising 4 is also gone. Because they were... It's like blue something? Maybe they're still around. I guess, uh, Swery's still in the game. After, uh, he made D4. What was the director that made, uh, Crimson Dragon? If there's one thing that Microsoft deserves ups for, and I do actually bring this up quite a bit, so maybe I've given them enough, but they have not give they did not, well, I think they've given up now, but for a long time they did not give up on throwing money to weird Japanese games to try and get that, like, underground gamer clout. Like, Phantom Dust and, uh... They had Metal Wolf Chaos, and like, they they had some weird, like, Fantasy Star, I think. Uh, they threw some money at some Japanese game devs to get some games on their system. And, uh, some really good games became of that. Lost Odyssey, Bleed Dragon, that was all because they were, like, trying to get a foothold in Japan. And willing to throw some money at it, so. Which is what makes me extra excited about them buying all the, uh, all the, uh, game studios. When Microsoft throws money at a studio, they usually get a pretty good big game back out of it. Um... And, and for, for whatever people's opinions may be about Rare, man. Viva Pinata's great. Sea of Thieves is phenomenal. So I don't, I don't know. I don't, I... Rare doesn't make really... Oh, right, this room. Yes. I put a trip mine behind the Spitty Man, and it blew up and killed me, and I decided that was enough. So, I'm back. They're throwing it to cult classic studios now, and it can't be more hyped for studios like Double Fine and Obsidian. Yeah, Double Fine, Obsidian, Ninja Theory. They, uh... It may not be, like, the hot... Like, I feel like Sony's studios have the reputation because of what they did in the... Largely in the PS4 life cycle. I mean, yeah, you have, you've got, like, Insomniac from Ratchet and & Clank and, and Sucker... Like, they've all had good franchises, but not, none of them have been, like, world-caliber franchises like Last of Us has become. Or Spider-Man. Um, okay, so I'm going to try Molotov. I'm going to try Molotov and Rifle. Let's let's start getting crafty with this. Let's let's a let's let's attack the problem here. I like how just fucking pulling out a Molotov pisses him off. Like that's the thing. I feel like the I feel like sometimes the infected go by video game rules instead of any kind of like actual in and or like in in setting rules. Oh, I guess that was... It wasn't actually a reaction. Just can't make it sounds. Heard another one? I thought I heard another one. Okay, that wasn't so bad. I think that's the other thing, too, is I need to... I think I need to be, gameplay-wise, more ready to initiate combat on Infected. Sound speaking? Yes, thank you so much, I'm sorry. Sound as wiser. Well I'm so sorry. Yep, the last game was really quiet. That's a, that's a whoopsie on my. That's my bad. My bad. I'll fix it. 
it doesn't hurt or it doesn't help that this game is also really quiet most of the time. Okay, I'm just gonna put it where it usually is safe, which is right about now. So again, very very sorry about that. Thank you for thank you for letting me know. Yeah, dynamic range is pretty wide in this game. I, I set it to be uh, as narrow as possible for streaming purposes, but that's not very cinematic. Yo, when Dale comes by, he's going to ask you for the save combo, but just walk over to the garage and put it in yourself. Otherwise, he's going to bother you eight more times. Combo's 3082.65. Someone needs to talk to his wife. I know she wants to think he's going to get better, but it's time to get practical. Or the WLF have some real doctors at their base. Nobody would blame her for leaving, except Boris, but fuck him. No enemy titties this stream? Oh, uh, you missed them. But they were also borderline... Borderline, uh... Borderline 2 anime, if you catch my drift, so... Maybe it's best to not talk about that. Thank you, Penguin. I'm gonna need to remember that. I don't... wait. There wasn't a safe, right? Oh yeah, Gambit. I did see that on, um, I think on, uh, on Reddit, them talking about how you could... Just walk over to the garage and put it in yourself. I don't remember... fuck. Is that forward or backward? This is the tough part about putting a game down and then picking back up, because I don't remember if there was a garage on the other side of this building, but I actually don't think there was, but I don't know if they want me to backtrack to find it. Because they may. Is there a garage over there? I mean, I guess, screw it. I've cleared everything out, so it's not like it's going to be a problem. It's not far. Backtrack if you want safe. Alright. Thank you. I, uh... It didn't, like, my gamer sense was telling me there's no way that they would put a, a note in like that that would be forward, right? Behind the salon. Alright, thank you. Uh... Behind this? It's on the back alley? Alright. Ah! Thank you. Oh, huh, I didn't even come in here. Hold on a second, let me scout around a little bit. Okay, there's nothing there. This game looks great if nothing else. Yeah, Night Sentinel, I I have I have nothing but good. Ho holy good and uh Oh boy, they heard that, huh? Oh that's Oh, they can't operate doors. Um I have nothing but positive things to say about the game's production. Uh the quality of it, the technical aspects of it, the quality of the the acting, the fidelity of the motion, or the performance capture, like, it is all best in class. Um, set, setting new bars kind of territory. How story from 1 to 10? I can't really, I can't really put a number on it, because I haven't finished it. Oh, that reminds me, I gotta put... Hold on a second. There we go. Just remind myself to put blind in the title, just just in case. Because this this would be the territory where people are doing their like fourth or fifth playthroughs. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, maybe I should have put the mine down before opening the door? You... Okay. The the axiom I am learning... The... The unavoidable rule... Is that if an enemy sees you... You cannot put down a mine without dying. Like, that just seems to be, like, the thing. The death was kind of cool. It kind of was, actually, yeah. The death, the death cameras are actually shockingly, like, well-framed and cinematic. Um, that's not an easy thing to do, by the way. Um... I've only seen one instance where, like, Ellie has fallen into a wall just because of how the animations and the, uh, the shit played out. But, like, to have a character running around in a, in a game environment where a spontaneous thing can happen, but then have the results of that get framed by a positioned camera that, like, everything's visible and lit and, like, I don't know. There's, it's, it's harder than it sounds. Okay, so let me... 
Let me try to get fancy with this. Do you set off your own mine? That's how mines work. You put them down before and draw them to it. Yeah, I was. I guess I, I started executing my plan a little too late. Okay, so I'll put that there. Nope. Ah, fuck. So the triangle button is is both. Dang it. Oh well, I still got melee. I will say that, like, uh, if you... There, there is a, a rhythm you can fall into in this game when it is at least somewhat predictable in its gameplay systems where you can, um, like, you're always just thinking of the beat ahead of what you're doing. And then if you're confident with your button presses, it can form extremely cinematic action sequences. Um, the tools that they give you in this game and the way that the camera moves and the way that Ellie moves between animations does give you the power to truly make cinematic looking uh, action set pieces. Um, if you know what you're doing. I mean, I've seen some clips that, that really call attention to that. But like, I re Again, it just reminds me so much of Metal Gear Solid 4. How you had the... Uh, the control set may not have been the most easy to learn. And it, uh, that game had a host of other weird just weird is the only word I can describe but if you knew what you were doing and you knew how to use all the toys you could actually string together some very cool like combos for lack of a better word that looked incredibly cinematic and just fun to watch uh, it was a game that lets you express like artistry through your gameplay uh, I feel like stealth games give you that you know it's not a, it's about approach and and intent and style I like that stuff. Yeah, Dishonored 2 is very good for that. Were you up to in this game? Seattle Day 2. But I'm like a little bit into Seattle Day 2. So, um, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Gundam. You're nailing it. I need to remember that, like, some of those questions aren't even directed at me. And and people in chat are more than happy to answer them. Uh, 32, 30, 82, 65. 30, 82, 65. 30, 82, 65. Ah. Was Bruce playing this today? It sounds like he's about as motivated to play this as I am if he hasn't finished it yet. Oh, sorry, I didn't I didn't do a good click demo. Whoa, new gun? Or a new holster? You got second holster! So I can have two pistols now? Ah. Alright. Neat. But yeah, I, uh... I mean, looking on the brighter side of things, I think... <laughs> if, if I stack it against e each, each other, I think the game at its highest is better than the game, like... The game's highs are so much higher than, the, than its lows. So, and, it, and especially compared to the last game. The, for real, like, the open world emergent sort of immersive sim aspects are... F are fucking great. To me, to me, that is the game... That is the game... That is like a true sequel. Of the same gameplay idea, but broadened in scope to not only increase its gameplay complexity, but also its, like, possibility space. And to allow for even more player freedom and expression. Um, that's not something I expected. Really. Especially when the last game almost felt like it, it included the video game as, like, an obligation. Uh, so, I'm just so enamored with that aspect of the game. And there's, there's a, there was a little bit of it here, but, um, man... Those are, those are just the best the best parts of the game so far. When you're up against human enemies in an open environment with other like other infected actors and stuff like that. Hmm. Uli, it was Boris. 
Uh, I saw him shoot that WLF patrol against their own van. Jesus, I get it. They killed his daughter. But he just signed our death warrant. I have one chance out of this. We turn him in. I know he's your friend, but if those wolves that shot that girl over some graffiti... Or if those wolves shot that girl over some graffiti, think of what they'll do to all of us if they think we're harboring the killer of three of their own. Let's meet at the usual place after curfew. You, what scares me is like... It's not necessarily the ability or inability of humans to rebuild and survive. It's, it's what happens after that. After things are chill and somewhat calm, but then people... People get skittish and weird and like supply or constraining resources makes them start to turn on each other and blame each other and and then people use that to like seize power and that's the shit that I would that like really bugs me more than just the the presence of a dystopia. I don't play many games outside of racing sims, but I loved it. Oh this game? You're describing the birth of America? You're right. You are absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, moving out on your own. Feeling like you know everything. <laughs> okay, bow and arrow coming up. Just in case. I'm excited for that. I would like, uh... To me, the game is at its strongest when, like... And to a degree most believable, when Ellie's, like, kind of a... A weird assassin. some visuals in the game I can't get out of my head. Yeah? I, I do think at the end of the day, um, for all the discourse and what have you, I think already I've, I've had moments in the game that are powerful and successful. Even if sometimes it's, tr it's like, it's obvious that it's aiming way higher than it lands. But it's still landing high. It's like, what is that? Shoot for the shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you land among the stars. That sort of deal. Uh, I need that. I need that sped up prone to come into come into action here. All right. Also, I am just I'm just super down with this sort of gameplay because this is just straight Metal Gear Solid Three, and I was not ready for that. Um, but I'm very very happy because I love Metal Gear Solid Three. That's Metal Gear Solid and Resident Evil all in one. When when everything when everything in the game is firing, when like you're in an open environment and you're managing resources and you're trying to be stealthy and you have like limited in you have limited information yes it's exactly that and and if only the whole game were that uh not that it could should be or could be really because uh, you i i do think there's also space in games like this for like closed more tailored encounters but uh man we'll see we'll see ah frick oh what huh the Oh, you get you get a knife no matter what, huh? Also, square is not dodge. I've been playing Assassin's Creed again. God, ugh. having to double tap is also annoying. But uh, it's it's here when the game is at its weakest, unfortunately, because all that all that technical power, while being amazing, also makes the game very laggy. Uh, just in terms of its inputs and its responses. So. That was pretty sick, though. And that's, that's kind of, that also is kind of why, uh, the game seems to sing so much more powerfully when you're playing stealth, is because the, whew, the aiming and the combat just don't, don't feel right. I can see how it's... It, maybe that's an intentional to make you feel like you are being swarmed. Um, to make you panicked. The way that the enemy... They just jerk around so much. It's more than just the artistry of it. It actually makes hitting them difficult. Um, especially with how slow and cinematic your camera moves around. This is no quake. And then you want, you want me to hit something that's bouncing all around the screen. With a controller? That's on me. I'm not very good at controller, but... 
Is it bad? Am I just... I'm just bad with aiming. I'm not great at aiming either, but I put in time. I can hit stuff, and it's very hard to aim in this game. It's input lag. It's 100% input lag. And also slow camera acceleration, like, which is another thing that is more cinematic. When you do this, you're not, like, not only does it take the camera a second to start moving, but it accelerates into the motion as well. Um... Will there be a drunk stream this Friday? Is this Friday the 4th? I don't know what day it is. I don't know where I am. Um, I don't know. I'm... I'm mm. She has to undo the safety on her pistol so there's lag there. I must be a lag of cinematic. Uh, oh, 4th is Saturday? Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'll do some stuff on, uh, on the 4th early in the day. We'll see what how plans shake out. But, no, I'm not, like, drunk streams are not going to be a regularly scheduled thing for me for a while. I gotta lose weight. And, uh, having fun is not how you lose weight. Unless having fun is, uh, dieting and eating less. Huh, interesting. Weirdly empty area. Oh, I guess I'm doing pretty well on items, so... There may be spawn points that are not being populated. Oh. Brainstorm. A tech billionaire with a taste for adrenaline, Brainstorm likes nothing better than to rush into danger and save the day, using inventions of his own creation. Oh, there's a comma there. But there's a catch. He doesn't make a move until you decide how he should proceed. Through his crowdsourced heroism app, Justify. Justify. Nice. Who will be his next enemy? The choice rests in your hands. That's 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 a cute idea. I wonder if the the respective developers got to write their own uh, superhero powers and backstories. I hope so. What's up, Raven? Yep, new haircut. Got me a got me a haircut yesterday. More depressing notes. Oh no, we got we got some good stuff. Rosemonts. So this is pre-collapse. I oh, like the fan side from Sona 5. Holy crap, you're right. I thought it was interesting that they never really... I, I was like, I was kind of excited to, for Persona 5 to sort of bite off the idea of, uh, of, of like mob justice on the internet. But it never really went there. And I'm like, okay, that's that's a pretty heady topic. I mean, yeah, Persona can dip into headiness uh, sometimes. But once they launched the website, I was like, oh boy. So people are going to gang up on somebody who ends up being innocent? Like, this is going to be a thing, right? And they just never really never really played with that. I mean, the game was long enough. So it's all right. But uh, I, thought, I thought it was going to go there. Oh, thank you, on this. Yeah. Did you get Futaba's full social link? I don't think I did. Was that, a, was that part of it then? There, it wasn't there, I just didn't see it. Because that's one fucked up link. Yeah. I, I got Fut most of, well, I guess I assume most of Futaba's backstory. The Star Covenant tried to do that? Or Confidant? Who was Star? Was that the, like, reporter? Or the, the PI? Gosh, I don't remember. I forgot a lot about Persona 5, it turns out. Elon, I'm sorry. I won't be able to keep taking care of Alfie. You were right about the wolves. They turned out to be worse than the military. What I didn't expect is that our own neighborhood would turn on each other. They all saw what the wolves did to my poor Sophia. And what did everybody want to do in return? Appease? I deserved wolf blood. They should have joined me. Instead, they conspired against me. So I got them first. Oh, wait. There was a flip. There was a flip. What'd you do, Boris? What'd you do, Boris? Oh, Mishmo's moon? Yeah. Flip that letter. Oh. I poisoned them, one by one. Not enough to kill them. Just put them to sleep. Then I dragged them into a spored garage. Yuli woke up. We wrestled. I shut him in there, but he bit me. Those traitors are going to watch each other turn. They will suffer. I hope they think of me when they lose their minds. I'm already starting to lose mine. It won't be long now. 
Hope you found some peace somewhere outside of this shitty town. Hope you don't come back to see all of this. If you do, I'm sorry. Boris is a real fucker. That was the garage. Damn. Oh, Hifumi Togo. Oh, the... The, um... The, like, the chess player? Or the, the shoji player? Not chess. Look at that. I, uh... I, yeah, I localized it in my head. Or is it shogi? I don't know. Really? Okay, so I, d I don't think I finished her link either. Because, uh, yeah, you had to, like... she only, You could only catch her on one day of the week. Um, which is... There are usually the links that I prioritize. But I think as I sli slid into endgame, I was, like... I was throwing boring... Boring and non-progression days at Togo and nothing was happening. So I, was, I think I just wrote her off at some point. So, I don't know. Just, just theory with the Boris thing. That's weird that there would be a... Oh, shit. That was scary. That there would be a, a Last of Us narrative in which revenge is... is not good. Is this is Boris? Yeah, that's Boris. It's Boris! I like how he... That, there's that bow, my favorite weapon. Bows are bows are pretty sick in all video games because they like they're resource neutral and stealth, so it's like the ultimate thinking gamer's way to play games. The revenge is not good part hasn't kicked in yet. Are you sure? Because <laughs> I think I already saw it a few times. Far Cry bows are based, yeah. Far Cry, Crisis. Uh, That's one way to use mannequins. Thief. Deus Ex had a fucking trank bow. Mm. Let's see. And you got a factor in the arc. That fucking sucks, man. Alright. So. <sighs> this doesn't do a GTA style. Basically. You pull to aim on something, and if you if you lock on, then neutral stick is center mass, and you push up to aim, and then if you let go of the stick, like it yanks it back down to center. Whereas in something like GTA, you would pull, you would pull the trigger, it would zoom to center mass, but then if you moved up and let go of the stick, it would just move up. So it's, I'm gonna see if there's an option to make it more like GTA lock on style. That just makes more sense to me than having your aim lock on and track the person you're shooting. There was another game that did that, and it seemed to even make more sense in that game. <sighs> Assistance, aim assist, lock on aim. Okay. I'm gonna aim, target to center the enemy's body by default. Use R to do a like set of auto target and lock to screen. I guess I can. What? So, silly pull your reticle towards targets when aiming and adds sight resistance when pulling the reticle off of an enemy. Maybe lock on strength? Maybe? You excited for the new Crisis Remastered gameplay apparently being shown tomorrow? Eh, I wouldn't say that I'm. I'm just excited for remastered gameplay, but I'm interested in the game. I, I'll probably check it out when it comes out. Crisis Remastered will require the entire sun to power it. Yeah, what are they what are they remastering about that game? I played that game a couple of years ago and it held up pretty well. Man, Crisis Crisis rules. I remember getting to like the alien ship part and just basically the whole game changing, and my mind was goddamn blown. That was so neat. It's been a long time since I've had a game like moment like that. Titanfall 2 got close, got really close. Hmm. They're remastering the net code. Crisis multiplayer was pretty cool. Nobody really played it. I think Game of Thrones is overhyped or spot on. Eh. Hey, we got 
another trespasser. A girl. Did you see her? I think Game of Thrones is, is pretty populist entertainment. I don't think it has a lot of value or uh, interesting commentary on anything, but I don't think anyone's claiming it does. It's a it's a dumb show about fighting and fucking. That's pretty much it. Light them on fire quick. Uh, I wasn't. I don't want to use Molotovs on people. Like, I don't want to see that. Given how this game treats, uh... How close can you get to puppers before they, they smell you? Apparently pretty close. What's up? Oh, smell hey. something, boy? Stop it. Fuck! Oh, please, no. Don't Molotov a dog? Yeah, right? I don't know. I'm not squeamish or anything. I just don't... I don't need to see that. And I don't I don't think I need it from a gameplay perspective. You gonna head out, Penguin? Alright. Thank you for watching. Do you feel bad? I mean, they didn't show me uh, me playing petting the dog before. But uh, I certainly did pet that dog, so that dog... I dug up crazy pet. It's a bit much when you do gory stuff. Yeah. I know it'll be bad. I'm not like scared to see it or anything. I just It's also more satisfying to me to to play stealthy. So, yeah. You can throw grenades at stuff or you can, I don't know. For me it's you exploded a dog. That's true. I like drawing a drawing a bow and arrows an interesting tell. Shut up, dude. Stop. See they move a lot. See like is When that happens, if you shoot somebody with a bow, I think I'm good, not throwing Molotovs at people. <laughs> Jesus. But difficulty? Just normal. What if they took out a picture of their kids and showed it to you as he executed them? Now that's realism. I, uh, man, that would be amazing. If you're, like, choking a dude out and then, like, family photos start tumbling out of his pocket. Bombs are also awful on people? Yeah, I could see that. God damn it. Uh, arrows are generally only recoverable on headshots. Ah, thank you. Okay. That's great to know. See? Again. Bow and arrow is the weapon for the... Fuck, is he? The intellectual gamer. Find him, we should let the dog have him. Oh, shit. Who the... Damn it. it. Fuck. Wrong. Got a on her. Where? Oh, I was... When did I bring the pistol out? When did I do that? I don't know, I must have at some point. Gotcha! Shit. Is that a doggo? Stop it! What are you locked on? Ugh. Dogs are there. Crap, man, they're basically on me. There's so many. Come on. Oh, 
use the... Nope. Okay, I couldn't find the button to do it. Hey. Silencer. Oh, you gotta hold it for some reason. Okay. God forbid I accidentally attach a silencer. Right over Fucking. Why? Oh, God. Her cocking the gun actually fucks your aim. Get her, boy! That's so realistic. Alright, alright. It actually moved the aim. I can't believe that. That's how realistic it is. Was that. I don't know, maybe that was me nudging the stick, but it really did feel like when she pulled the hammer back, it actually kinked to the aim a little bit. Oh, Lord, there's a lot of mans. There you go, boy. You lose the scent, boy? Oh, gosh, there are a lot of people. Where'd he go? Okay. The hell is she? Come on. Who's who's staring at me right now? Quiet. Fuck. Fuck. Oh, it takes a lot of takes a lot of stabbing. Crap! I don't have a weapon. Yeah, what are you supposed to? First shot has to be cocked. Why? 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 How do, how does that serve any interest to anyone? Also, yeah, not how guns work. It j it just means that the trigger pull is easier. You can actually pet the dog and he'll leave you alone. Just run up and pet square. Are you serious? I didn't know that. Alright, let me... Whoop. Jericho just got done with the game, but he really, he really enjoyed it, but he liked the first game, so take it as you will. I liked the first game, but that's it. I liked it. That's kind of it. Can be friends with the dog. I'm pretty sure next time you pet the dog with your foot with square. Yes, just hit square on dog. Especially if you happen to be holding an axe of friendship or a pipe of camaraderie. Um, I've been missing. I've been missing some subs, so I apologize about that. Um, Young Riles, thanks for the prime. Era 55, Telekinetic, thank you guys. Zenti, hey, thanks for sticking with the stream. Hey, man, don't thank me. Thank you. Thank you. Your prime dollars are, are making this stuff go. Um, and then also, of course, Bruce, thank you for the raid. SGK, thanks for the sub. Gambit, thanks for the resub. Mayo on rice. Gross, but thank you. And Nutbuster, 69,000. Thank you. Stop. Don't do that shit. Pirate Zen, hey, thank you for gifting out five subs. That's Pog. That's Pog. That's Stream Pog right there. Stream Pog. Why did Why did you switch guns? Did I didn't do that right, or did I do that? Did I tell you to switch guns, or did you just do that? I'm confused. Hmm. When you cocked the gun, did it only cock when you pressed fire? No. Um, I pulled to sights, and if you hold on sights for a while, she automatically cocks the gun. Um, there, see? It didn't move the aim, though, so that, that may have just been my, my imagination. I might be blaming the game for that. 
<sighs> it's possible that if you pull the trigger during the gun cock, like it may be entirely, it may be entirely uh, superficial. Could be safety. It's not safety. Safety's like on the side, and you can you can operate it with just one finger. Can you fire before she cocks it? Probably. <laughs> this is all. These are all experiments that uh, cost something to run. Um, I'm curious now, though. With his ma- Like, if you shoot the dog's master, will he still attack you? She grabs a gun, depending if there's an enemy around. That is true. Maybe that's- Maybe that's why you have to- Oh, no, the dog is sad. Fucking Christ, seriously? The dog is fucking sad. I did somebody see an enemy body. Uh... Come, dog will come for you later in the game. Finish it. Someone got her. Someone's out there. I want every building in the area searched. Fuck you. Decreasing lock on aim did help a lot, by the way. Or lock on strength. So yeah, I wonder, like, are the dogs innately antagonistic? Are you gonna growl and bark at me? Because I'm not a somebody you know. Or do they just go to another ALF person. Like, I, I can't make any assumptions. Like, if this were a normal video game, I would, I would assume that the dogs just have enemy AI. Fuck. Gotcha. That was pretty awesome, though. That's one of the few times I've actually been able to snap aim successfully, even though the camera went through a lampshade. <laughs> Go and pet that pup? Alright, I will. Actually, I'm gonna save first. Does it save in the- does it save, like, your absolute game state, or does it just save, like, a checkpoint when you do that? I think it saves the state. Hated this level because of enemy placement? Fuck. Why am I holding this gun?! When did I switch to this gun?! Why does that keep happening? That's really weird. That reload animation is really cool, though. I don't know, man. Some things about this game are just confusing. I don't remember switching to that gun and it happened again. Maybe if I, like, pull... No? Maybe I'm hitting buttons and I'm just going crazy? There's... Auto saves maintain everything about your last safe position. Okay. Ooh. Hello, melee weapon. I'll take that. When you tap R1, you switch weapons quickly? Maybe that's what I'm doing? Wait, when you tap R R1. Maybe that is what I'm doing. Yeah, maybe that is. I am... Ugh, fuck. I might be trying to do... Okay. It's possible that I'm trying to do uh, survival vision. And instead, I'm tapping R1. We lost another fuck, that aim is so janky. Come on, talk to me. Oh, he won't be talking to anyone. You can't grab from prone, right? Answer me. Do like a Rambo thing, just materialize. Quiet. Let go. There's that guy up there. Hey, Grace. What up? I think when you assassinate, it defaults back to silence pistol. I yeah, that may be. I feel like when I keep going to my gun, it's the snub pistol, the non-silenced one. But uh, yeah, maybe I'm tapping R1. I might just be confused with my buttons. Why are you like this? Okay. Your light is on? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't think it's a button thing. I experienced it too. Mm. Yeah, it seems like... Uh, I, ha I hate I hate um, pinning it on this because it is such a kind of a, a rote complaint to have about The Last of Us, but 
I feel like sometimes they have the characters do things automatically that actually have gameplay implications that maybe you're not mentally, or you as a player don't mentally track. All right, ultimate test. There's no humans around, but there is a good dog, a good boy. There's still, there's still like encounter music. Okay. <laughs> I did not enjoy that. Pranked. <laughs> this is some Rambo stealth. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 fucking great. These sequences in the game, when you're not fighting the controls or the weird aim, or the sometimes unpredictable uh, AI rules, both you know unpredictable in good and bad ways. Um, it does create some fantastic gameplay encounters that you are 100% in control of. So, like, the whole, like, it's a movie game doesn't, doesn't fly anymore. This is, this is when The Last of Us 2 is, is a fantastic video game. Um, so I'm, I'm really curious to see the rest of it. The last of it. The last of the rest of it. Because, like, a mix between Hotline and Metal Gear Solid? Maybe, yeah, I can see that. I always love sort of glass cannon gameplay too, which, you know, Ellie's, I'm playing on normal, so Ellie can take a shot. She can take several, in fact. Anyone see a sign of her? Talk to me, guys. Anyone seen her? There's no one. Much oh, there's at least two left. I am impressed with the number of, like, there's a, a large number of active enemies in this zone, too. And they don't, they don't seem like they're on... Maybe they start on specified patrol routes, but their behavior, like, opens up. Uh, you can't really, like, game... Well, I was gonna say that. You can't... I want to say you can't really game the AI, but... I'm sure if you play it enough times, you'll, you'll know exactly what they're gonna do in any given situation. Oh, wait, that's a hell of a shot. And he's moving away. Hmm. I'm sorry, doggo. Or, no, I'm not. Okay, I'm sorry, doggo. Can you imagine shooting a bow while being prone? Yeah. That's, uh, that is, that is some Rambo, Rambo shit right there. I feel like one's enjoyment of the section is dependent on how many times they die in it. I can see that. I mean, I'm, I've never been, I've never held it against a game for using death or fail states to educate me on ways that I should play or like what the game will not allow me to fuck around with um, I'm fine with fail states being used as like a hey you we're holding you to a different standard than that 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 ain't it pal so I don't know I feel like that's largely been my encounter of death so well no the uh, fuck I think it came from back there there's a lot. How many? There's one. Fuck! No. Fuck! Oh, where did the fuck did you come from? I, uh... I'm probably just gonna get shot to death. I don't know that I have anywhere to go. Great! That's a lot of gameplay that I just lost. Day and X, she had a shotgun, and she wasn't right next to me. Melee wasn't gonna work. And now I don't know where I am, or how many enemies there are, or really anything. What happened? I wasn't watching. A person saw me. I, I underestimated severely how many enemies were left in this area. Oh, this is a pretty generous save point. Also, it's it's hard it's hard to really have an issue with it. Given how fast the loads are. I appreciate that. That didn't happen on accident. Don't. What did you do? Turn the camera! Wow. God, the, sometimes the fucking... God damn it. Pull it! I, uh... 
Oi. Another instance of like just fiending for that cinema cinematographic experience. Oh, through the oh, now I'm back out here. Great. Over here! Don't let escape! I don't understand why they ratchet the camera sensitivity so far down. Uh, I think I'm alright. Nick Cage, you don't have to. You don't have to tell me to do everything. I guess it's more you're just watching along. Fuck. Of course that was the shot. Of course that was the one. Oh shit! I'm running. Go! God damn it! Stupid ass animations. I'm gonna bounce off every object. All right. Hip. Yeah, the camera is kind of your number one enemy. It feels like. All right. Dog can take a fucking bullet, man. Can you see your scent in that vision? It looks like it, yeah. You can see your trail, which is kind of cool. Uh, I guess you can use, yeah, uh, Penguin, I agree. How right, how it's, the camera is always over her right shoulder, or largely over her right shoulder. Sometimes it switches to her left when you don't want it on that side. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. It's, it gets on my nerves too, especially when you know you need to use the, the third-person camera to keep your, uh, to scout information. Yeah, toggling it is seems like the way to do it, and you can toggle when you're aiming down, aiming over the shoulder, but you can't toggle when you're just in solid snake territory, which would be very, very useful to increase the visible space around corners. And like, it, to some degree, it's a testament to the game, and it's 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 um, mechanical soundness as a stealth game that you even need tools like that. What's up, Scooch? Did you mean it switches to her left when you're behind cover and look to her left? Yeah, it's supposed to. I've had I've had uh, I've had issues sometimes yeah sometimes sometimes it does it works all the, it works all the time 50% of the time is stealth required or can you run a gun to some extent I that mm, I'm sure you can if you have better aim than I do um, and if you have like the items if you if you bought those upgrades like it's, it's actually kind of a complicated question than whether it's like a yes no. It doesn't seem like the game implies that it's not really meant to be played that way, but uh, you can certainly tweak all sorts of settings and I, I'm sure if you like spec your your Ellie out that way, you can probably make it more viable. I just like playing stealth, so that's why I do it. Okay, so I don't have mu like the music is telling me it's not not in combat territory anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that I can walk around and loot at my leisure. I do, there is something that's just innately feel good about the prospect of like building up resources and then using them and then building them back up again. Resident Evil was always pretty good about that flow. I'd say the faster stealth kill upgrade is a must. I recommend it if you want to be stealthy. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm saving up for everything in the stealth tree right now. Um, there's a couple of upgrades that look pretty tasty in there. It was not a PlayStation 3 TM console. I am deeply, deeply concerned and mostly offended. Like the trees in your setup behind you? Yeah, it's nice. A little greenery here on twitch.tv. 
I feel like you will always have just enough ammo. Yeah. Games are pretty good about using the uh, the perception of resources to to provoke emotions, I guess, create tension. Background needs more hanging wires to complement your chair. I agree. There's always time. So that's why. Oh, tape and blades. I might as well fix this up, sure. Oh, it didn't add anything. Blech. Is it, is it, uh, somebody said that tape gets so scarce late in the game, is it because of, uh, because of bows? Story so far is, uh, eh, lucky. It's, it's about what I would have expected from more Last of Us. So I guess that's not a bad thing. Haven't gotten to any big old twists yet, so I guess we'll see. There's gotta be a way to go upstairs. I know, well, at least on one of my playthroughs of this area, there's a there's an arrow up there I would like to retrieve. Okay, there we go. Time to take off my shorts and sleep to a lovely stream. Hell yeah, Desmond. I got some comfy streams I'll sleep to. I understand that. I understand that vibe. Allow me to lull you into slumberland by... <laughs> loudly complaining at a game for a few hours. Shouting obscenities and... Oh, it was on the fr it was on the front balcony. I find it hard in games to actually use the resources that are given to me. Some of some hoarding of inner self prevents from throwing the Molotov. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people have had that. Well, there's no body up here, so I guess I didn't do that this time. I think a lot of people wrestle with that sort of thing. Get out of here. I I've been trying to train myself out of it, like actually use things. And, Pick that up, right? Yeah, okay. No reason to make the game harder than it needs to be. Will they release an anthology for the PS5? Likely. I mean, why release them together when you can release them separately? I think more likely you'd, you'll see a, a re remaster of 4 and then a re. or a, a re remaster of 1 and then a remaster of 2. Bleh. I think those are products that could easily sell on their own, because they already have. Two years? Oh, probably shorter than that. I don't know. Ooh. That's that's nice. Uh, does that give the current one I have? Oh, I didn't make one. Yeah, let's make one. Oh, don't have bottle. Interesting. I feel like, uh... Remasters seem like a pretty tight turnaround, and uh, I th I suspect there's not actually going to be a whole lot of punch on the PS5 launch, based on the um, based on the event. The lifespan of PS5, sure, looks great, can't wait, but the launch looks pretty 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 sparse. I imagine we'll see more of it, but it's like the biggest thing Sony has for launches. I guess the Astrobot. And then, what are Astro Chronicles or whatever it's called? Astro Missions? Yeah. Anyway, I get that name wrong all the time. I feel like it's a. I gotta learn it. It's disrespectful. And then Miles Morales. Which, cool. Releasing something called Spider Man on PS5. No, I know. That's one game. Gran Turismo is not a launch game. And bug snacks, but that's not exclusive. So, yes. Spider Man. One video game. Zero Dawn 2, not launch. Nothing they showed was launch except for Miles Morales and uh, Bug Snacks. But Bug Snacks is also not, a, not an exclusive, so. That's upon par with any console launch that isn't Nintendo. Yeah, you're right. But, uh, I think the difference is now there's, there's such an economy around. Uh, remasters. I think Sony's gonna fast track whatever they can just to get just to get software out. Yeah, GTA 5. That's true. Always GTA 5.
You can get Minecraft. Mm. Uh, no attractive chocolate. Microsoft has not done their Series X software showcase yet. Really. I mean, they, they did do one, but it was all third-party stuff. So, they've done... I mean, this is easy speculation, but like... Halo Infinite, if that's a launch title... <sighs> presuming that Halo Infinite will be good and be ready for launch. That's a lot of presumptions, but uh, there's that. Ninja Theory. Oh yeah, Hellblade. Um, Hellblade 2. I would say, like, to, for, for me, as a, as a Ninja Theory fan, Hellblade 2 and uh, Miles Morales are kind of like here and here. I feel like that's a, that's a one for the other. For me, I know not everyone cares about Hellblade as much as that, but I, I liked that game a lot. Um, and also like the last game in the world I thought would ever get a sequel. Pretty sure they said Halo's a launch title? I... They've talked about it in conjunction with Series X, but I don't think they've ever, ever actually said it's a launch title. I could be wrong, because I've been, I've been, I've been waiting. Oh, they said Hellblade 2 isn't a launch title? Okay. Oh, they did? Okay. I didn't know that they ever actually straight up said for sure that that was a thing. Fuck, man. I didn't get any of my arrows back. So many squads getting pulled in for one trespasser. The Crafts two arrows. Wow. Scars. That's expensive. Trespassers might be working with them. Don't drop your guard. We got more doggos. We go help? Shit, man. Like you're, you're. As long as you don't move, they basically can't see you in tall grass, right? <laughs> Fuck. Shut. Oof, that was close. I don't have a... I don't have a silencer? Oh shit, I never got enough bottle to make one. Oh boy. I'm gonna have to be extra careful. I do not have quiet tools right now. What if you can stealth kill a doggo? I don't know. Their game mechanic would imply that you can't sneak up on them. Yeah, Demon Souls is very exciting. I was... I was... Bummed that there was zero date on that trailer. God damn it. You're just gonna happen to walk right at me! Right at me. Just right here. Right here. Why not? Yeah. Well, that's stealth for you, I guess. God damn it. I should have put a mine on her. Damn it. I never. Th I just don't think on that wavelength, I guess. Sorry. This is also a bad idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Didn't even come around the car. Fuck off. Like, I don't even... It's like once, once stealth gets to a certain point, you don't even want to play it through. It's just more annoying. Just let it reload. Bleh. Demon Souls will let you pick between better graphics and better frame rate, which more remasters should do. I agree. I agree. I think ideally you shouldn't have to pick. But, uh, no, the, the screenshots of the Demon Souls looked bananas. Bananas pretty. I'm just gonna walk here, right? Oh, I guess this is where you heard the sound. See where the head is. Damn it. That's gameplay, baby. 
scared for Xbox, so they didn't hide anything about the console specs, but they've been pretty quiet about titles for it apart from Minecraft and Gears. I don't know that 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 impl that should uh that should uh, uh require some some terror on your part. They're probably just trying to figure out how to uh how to message it. If anything, the the reception to their last event probably has them like going back and rethinking things a bit, taking more time. They've got time, you know. Yeah, storm hail. People have talked about that. Oh, like some people can just turn off combat entirely. I got close to doing that at some at a certain point, to be honest. I I really enjoy the stealth in, in these sequences, even if sometimes it doesn't go to plan. But guess what? That's part of that's part of stealth. It uh it makes humans make for a lot more engaging uh, stealth enemies than uh, the infected do. Yes. What about The Sims? How are we going to play The Sims on uh, Series X? Phil Spencer, thank you for joining us today. Gamers everywhere have one question on their gaming lips. Sims? Your thoughts? Microsoft needs to push Game Pass hard. They are, and it's working. It's pretty clear that that's that's their uh, their belief in the future of of Mike or of of the Xbox brand. Not to mention uh, their belief in the growth of Xbox revenue. I still don't have enough bottle. Fuck. That's not even a little bit what I wanted to have happen. Well, there goes my arrow. Womp womp. Oh, there's no... Hmm. So this is what gets weird. It was like... Fucking god, the aim is so bad. There. Hi. Okay. But am I gonna get a sick tattoo? That's a sub goal, baby. Every time I stream, I, I say this every time I stream and no one listens, but I'll say it again. Um, if I get 35,000 subs, I'll get a tattoo. That's a promise. That's all it takes. Yeah, Steven. I say this every day and no one listens. I don't get it. Tattoo of what? Uh, I've got... I, I know what it's going to be. I actually I actually do have some designs, but... Saw some comparison screenshots showing how Demon Souls Remaster <clears throat> has changed up the design of certain aspects of the game. Looks like it could change up the atmosphere of the game. Someone who's never played the original is looking forward to the remaster because of it. I wonder if I should try to go out of my way to play the PS3 version anyway. Teton, oh, those, those, uh, those screenshots go deep in the paint uh, with the analysis. I don't think, let me put it this way, I don't think it, and if you hadn't seen those screenshots, I think it, you'd be hard pressed to, uh, to notice, to notice the, fucking god! It's... Aiming in this game sucks so much dick, I don't understand. <laughs> ah, it's so difficult. I don't know, well, I know why, but... Yeah, it's gonna be the Far Cry 3 tattoo sleep, yep. Um, you got it. Killer Kiwi, thanks for the sub. Honer, seven, thank you. Birdie Boogie, thanks for the six months. This music is great, by the way. Uh, MX17, thanks for the sub. And Maldonacho, 1981, thank you. Does the point system hacker points do anything for you? Is just a better way to see... Who's integrating with content? I it doesn't do any. I mean, it, it it doesn't earn any revenue, but it's uh, it doesn't generate money. Uh, but it's it's just fun. It's just for goose, basically. A way to increase audience uh, interaction and participation, I guess. 
Aim assist is more a problem than anything else. Yeah. But aiming is bad without it. It's like... It, it's, it's weird to complain about it, given how exhaustive a lot of the options are, but... Um, maybe I'll just do this. Maybe I'll just try going completely free ball out here. And then accessibility option, like just up on the D-pad for a headshot? Hmm. Turn off lock on. Oh, so aim assist but no lock on? Maybe aim assist on, alright. I'll, I'll try that. A non-monetary system to spend, exactly. Yep. Okay. Yeah, pineapple aiming just sucks. Like, I... I really do attribute that to the the fact that it's a low frame rate game, the fact that the camera is very slow. I that's another thing that I could probably change, but really, it's really the input lag. It's it's 300% input lag. Um, there's at least three or four. I, I want to say, and this this is like a maybe it's two, maybe it's two frames, two to three. I don't know. I'm I'm being needlessly pedantic now, but like in a 30 FPS game. That was cute. That was interesting. I like that. Oh, you can see me. Okay. Like, but the enemies just move really fast. For as, as slow and, and laborious and laggy as your aim is, the enemies dart around like crazy. Um... Which is like, compare that to something like uh, Gears of War Locust, who like to like crouch down with their head just tee, just peeing out just a teensy little bit to give you that like easy headshot. Sorry, doggo. I assume that was supposed to be a run through section. Oh, really? Oh. Oh, oops. I keep forgetting that the game has those. Uh, movie hallways. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, you're right. This is a, uh... What the fuck?! Okay, it's not a running sequence, never mind. Oh lord. Oh lord. Fucking goddammit, Last of Us. You just... You just can't... You just can't keep being the game that's fun. You gotta be something else. Okay. Input lag can come from the controller using Bluetooth and that operates on the two point. Yeah, I yeah, I know. It can come from other things. I've played enough PS4 game or to know. Like this is just a laggier game. It's it's the it's the engine. It's the post process. Like it looks it looks really pretty for a reason. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Unless you just randomly turn around! <sighs> I can't tell. Like, I can't tell if they hear me or if they're just randomly spinning, because that's just what NPCs do sometimes. <sighs> you ran in the wrong direction. That's... No, I didn't. <laughs> I ran in the direction I ran in. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. It's a video game. How can a direction be wrong? People are unreliable. Yeah, sure, but like that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like I don't know how to. Do I need to move slower? I don't know. Or was it just random? I don't know. The game doesn't provide you with the feedback you need to make those decisions or like. Like she's just fucking ju juking all over the place. God damn, it's annoying. It's just annoying. <laughs> Like fucking transporter two dancing down the hallway. They are on alert. They look around a lot. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. I don't, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that's just. It's not a big deal. It's just like. I feel like a game should should give you feedback, or make it. I mean, cl making it clear is it's it. It's all subjective. I'm just saying, like... Um... Sorry, that was a very specific reference. 
I for a game where I want to play stealth because the aiming is so rough. What the hell are you doing? I feel like I often don't get the. Uh, uh, Why don't you do this on your own? Feedback to really understand the Jesse. stealth aspects. Who's Dina? She's safe. She's just sick. What kind of sick? She's fine. Baby sick? Christ, there's a lot of them. You turn the enemy awareness thing on. Oh, is that like a visual indicator showing their alert level? Hey, how hurt are you? Friends out there rushed me. No warning, no nothing. Tell me you didn't come alone. Hmm. The game doesn't seem like you getting too close to enemies that are engaged. It gives you the ability to turn around and see when you get too close. Cause yeah, if it's um, idiot, you know if all you have to do is just come up behind their cone of vision and you can one shot everyone without spending any resources, the game is too easy. I get that. Like that that undoes the game and it it removes tension too. Once you understand the rules of AI, so it's like. I'm okay if they're just feeding noise into the AI to make it impossible to truly quantify. Um, are we gonna like what? Are we gonna are we gonna gamer this? Um, oh lord. Okay. Well. So if like if they're just injecting randomness or like uh, or like just gotcha gotcha in you when you get too close, I can vibe on that. Just because uh, I think it makes for a better game in the end. Because, yeah, stealth can be overpowered when the rules are very uh, finite and uh, deterministic. But, uh, I don't know if that's the case. It'd be nice to know. That's it, I guess. What? Wrong button. Nope. Hey, what happened to you? Don't worry about her. Like, like this is the. I guess she's in the center, but. Oh, he's going for it. I got a power bar on him. You got him. All right. More. How was he not seen? Okay. AI AI partners are uh, invisible. Oh. Jesse, get the fuck out of here! I'm trying. Jesse. Jesus. Watch out! Get the tire! You have unlimited bullets during the sequence? I feel like my bullets have... My bullets are like, homing on the hands. Okay, there we go. Pretty cool rail shooter. That's a that's a good way to end like a, a more open. Go, go. Oh. Oh my god. Not dead.
Oh, TJ TJ1021. Thanks for the prime. You okay? Can zombie spook him swim in this? Hmm. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know that they're ever depicted as being in water or navigating water. Glavius, video game's pretty good, man. I think that was the infected blood in the water. Huh. Oh, Mikoy, you gonna head out? Alright, man. Thanks for dropping in. Always good to see you. Friendly, friendly name, friendly conversation. So, wait. Why... Mm. I'm gonna, let me take a beat to try and remember. Why, what did Ellie leave for? What was she going to do? Why did she? I can't remember. Oh my God. Was she going to find supplies? Hey. To find Johnny, really? Okay. Hey, you okay? Nothing, no sleep won't take care of. For full NA gaming. We should get inside. NA full gaming rig laptop. What are your feelings on o Omen over Alienware? Personally, I have not had a lot of good interactions with gaming laptops in general. Um, Sneak out. Friends' problems. But uh, so that that's not exactly what you're asking. But to specifically to answer your question, I I haven't had a wealth of experience with either. Sit you down, huh? But uh, I don't know. You don't need to do that. Shut up. So when'd you leave Jackson? She still has her humanity, because she's warm and friendly. Ellie is not, because she's cold and mean. So she doesn't know how to care for people. She's gonna walk away and brood a little bit. Did you shoot your proverbial brick if they remaster Legend of Dragoon in 4K on PS5? I don't even know what that game would look like in 4K. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I would like it if they made some kind of JRPG with an active huh? battle system. Are you with me? Oh my gosh. Is this how this game is going to be structured formally? Is like, you play a chapter where you're mean Ellie running around shooting and stabbing people in the face, and then there's a, a chunk where it's like, the good, remember the good times? Is it really gonna like tick tock like that? I, I shouldn't, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just speaking out loud. I don't actually want an answer to that, but. Man, I mean, I forget my own birthday if she didn't remind me when it was. Actually formalize when, uh, formalize the bad, then good, then bad, then good. All right. I'm gonna use the restroom. I'm gonna use the restroom, then I'll come back to these happy times. Not really? Okay. That, that's a good answer. Alright. Be right back, guys. See you guys in just a second. I am refreshed. Please add the Born Mobile clip in more often. Should have I should have Born Mobile Day on the stream. Or every other every other clip is Born Mobile. Okay. What's going on? Hear that PS4 taking off. Why? I shouldn't fart. Just just a little. Got some stuff just a little, just a little peep. A peep and poop. You let me know if you want to talk about it. What's Born Mobile from? An old D3? No, it's a CES presentation. Um, but it's it's pretty peak, pretty peak cringe. Just a handful. Please remove the Born Mobile clip. Last percent of my will have diminished even more. Uh, I think you'll be fine. I think I think you'll find that your will to live runs deeper than you give it credit for. I don't know where he went or what he's shooting at. Oh, you're back there. Jump off. Time paradox. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, uh. Are you sure? I'm feeling generous. Is this Horia level? I already know how to aim down a scope. Poorly and miss a lot and then blame the game. See that sign there? Red one? Try hitting that. Good way to draw them out of wherever they're hiding. Got to aim higher. Leave the bullet room to drop. Really? I see. We have bullet drop. This game is crisis now. Well, we are on patrol. Let's clear them out. Okay, never mind. I guess I did need a tutorial after all. 
There you go. I'll see a few more. Gotcha. I like this thing. Shit. Make sure to compensate for the bullet drop. Just take your time. That's all of them. Usually more over this way if you want to keep shooting. Okay. Yeah, I got a, a double kill with a hip shot. Where are they coming from? Hordes like to move through this area in winter. They always end up leaving behind a few stragglers. They do the same routes every year? Like a migration or something. Hmm. What's that about? Well, when the barometric pressure reaches a certain temperature shit, I don't fucking know. <laughs> the shit. Looks like they're moving downhill. Why? Uh, dead animal. Favorite clip. By the truck there. Hmm. They're munching on that deer. Guess they're hungry. I don't know that I have a favorite. Um, maybe like a group of favorites. The the George Wood Tomb Raider two reviews is a pretty classic. Oh, over here. Wait, no, that's a truck. Truck am not deer. Where are you going? Looks clear. Bet there's some this way. Jeez. Yeah, the knife video is 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 too good. Very much too good. I enjoy that every time. I never get tired of it. Look way out. Under those guns. By that tower. See? That's a lot of mans. You're natural. And for more. What you think? You. <laughs> Pistastic. It's 2:40 a.m. Should I go to bed? I can't. I can't say. I don't know which. Do you have to do anything tomorrow? Maybe you got to do some stuff tomorrow. You're really getting it. Yes. Well done. Well, I'm not seeing any more. Yeah, me neither. All right. Let's Wait till 4:20. See if Joel's back. Sure. Now that's. That's the real advice right there. And her over. Hey, thanks for that. That's just what I needed. Sure. Ladies first. <sighs> Ellie was born in the zombie infested world? I don't think she was born... I think she was born before the outbreak, but... I don't think she uh, remembers that. I'm sure I think is. she was too young. I think. But if you don't talk to him, he's gonna think something's wrong. I'm sure that someone else in the talk chat is more, more dialed in. More oh, she was born after the outbreak. Mm. Okay, I will try. It was 14 in the first game. The game takes place 20 years after the outbreak. Ah, okay, well, good. Thank you guys for, uh, for cinching on the correct answer there. My, my card sense is going off. I feel like there's got to be a trading card around here. Is it on the table furthest away from everything? Hmm. Hmm. What's up, Borden? Is it a normal thing that she's immune to the thing? Yes. There have been, there have been trading cards in, in past sequences uh, already. Cause yeah, I was wondering if that was uh, if the game was gonna make a distinction there, and not put any pick upables in the past, but they did it. So now I have to look at every corner of every map. <laughs> oh, thank you, Angel Frame. Yeah, I got a haircut. It's weird. Um, it was kind of cool. I wondered how it would work, but like, obviously for most of the cut, you don't have to take a mask off. But for the parts where they trim around your ears, the dude that gave me my haircut, uh, I've been getting haircuts from him for like a couple years. 
he like got one of those long uh, barrettes and slipped it through the ear hole and then like clamped it to the back of the bib I was wearing, which held it in place but also moved it down a little bit so he could trim up. It was actually I was like, ah, that's cool to see people figure shit out. Uh, Ryan, thanks for the prime sub. Also, Turbid, thanks for the raid, dude. My coworkers have been shaving their heads and calling it COVID cuts. Yeah. Yeah, quarant uh, was it quarantine chic? Yeah, it's a thing. That was y'all shooting up there, right? Oh, just some stragglers. Ella got to try out my scope. How'd you like it? Yeah, if I ever wish to lose you, I sure really lose my shoe. I see you've, uh, you haven't gotten around to changing the string yet. I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, we'll get you some new ones. <clears throat> well, there's that music store down there. I bet they got guitar stuff. There is long overdue for a sweet banquet. Pouty Joel. I can keep watch. Where you say, kiddo? Sure. Still in tune though. And that's our cue. He didn't even have to turn the one the one peg that little bit. Are you sure you don't want to come? Get on now. Ooh. He's waiting. But what if there's a card? Wait, hold on. Why do you guys always volunteer for this patrol? It's got the most comfortable couch in all the lookouts. Set by the fire, put my feet up. Mm. Magic. <laughs> do 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 do. Hey, what's this savage starlight doing here? Pretty sure that's Joel's. Hmm. Accretion. Daniela and Captain Ryan have been thrown into the arena where hungry, hungry eyes of the travelers watch as they are forced to fight to the death. Will she put aside her feelings for the captain to fight for her own survival? I don't... Well, maybe it's just because the creators are fans of comics, but like... I kind of don't get the the constant placement of comic book stuff. This lookout suddenly fascinates. I'm just making sure I have everything. Is it meant to like remind us how much better this is? Remember when we used to idolize people wearing spandex and punching each other real hard, but now we have art. Like I don't I don't want to read pretense into everything, but the game kind of primes you to do that. This is really comfy. Yeah, it sounds beautiful. I would, I would like, I would have like eight cocktails there. Just sitting there, staring into the fire. Something, something, and lots of you, something, something. Okay, I could see that, yeah. The, uh, the tales that used to fill you with hope and optimism about the world were children's toys, and now we have, yeah. now we got real media. I, Morning the World of Old, that could be. That, uh, it's hard to imagine heroes like that, or, or maybe in times of, in tough times, you, you retreat into nice fantasy world. Yeah. Okay. I'm reading too much into it. Way too much into it. Right. I think Ellie just likes comic books. Oh, I mean, she tends... She seems to like all sorts of nerdy shit. Video games and animes. You and Tommy cross anything when you was out? Just the few we saw from the ridge. Oh, I didn't know they made a Last of Us comic. You? Uh, you know. Um, Is it any good? In the house. Jesse tells me you're handling your own quite well on the group patrol. He's even recommending you for paired patrol. Oh. Well, I think you're still a bit young for it. I'm a better shot than almost all of them. Oh, she's Anna gonna have more experience than most Anakin Skywalker syndrome. You think you're ready? I trust you. Oh. Okay. Thanks. You just do me a favor and start with the shorter routes for now. You know, see how you handle them. All right. 
Hey, you remember those uh, Savage Starlight comic books that you're into? Yeah. Tommy and I found some when we were moving through that school the other day. Did you like them? Oh, you know what? Not really my cup of tea, but... Dr. Daniela Starr, I mean, she's pretty... She's a savage. Well, what she does to Captain Ryan in that death match? Ooh. Yeah. I mean, he definitely deserved it, but... This is cute. There is something pretty genuine about... You're funny. Parents trying to participate in the media their kids are consuming to have something to talk with them about. Yeah, exactly, Snakey. He's reading them to try to relate. I mean, the entire game so far is just... Joel does nothing but but sort of uh, over-demonstrate his, uh, his desire to connect with Ellie. And she does nothing but uh, almost like low-key resent it like a good teenager. Ellie, you are on the patrol, but you are not classified patrol master. What? Damn it. Dialogue on this game is the best. Nah. Dialogue's pretty good. My concern is that Joel, like, there hasn't been a conversation between Joel and Ellie where he's not obviously, like, conveying his, his desire to connect. Um, so. Uh, I don't think we can go this way. It's been every conversation so far, but. Now, now we're the, it seems like this is going to be a sequence where they spend some more time together, so I'm looking forward to that. There being something there. Okay, so, now what? Well, if you're up for it, we can try cutting through that hotel. I'm up for it. Like old times. Oh, okay. He's compensating for lying to her, and she's rightfully upset because she wanted to die, die in one. <laughs> uh, I do think that he's he's living with guilt, and he's like, he's trying to to. Well, maybe not guilt so much. I do think he's trying to like he's trying to attain the life that he thought he lost. You know. Oh, well, that might be something. You think you can fit in there? Well, it's worth a shot. I think his motivations are are, are pretty nuanced and, and appreciable. It's more like that motivation is expressed in every single conversation Hold that on. I that I've seen with him so far. But again, it seems like we're getting to a point where there's a little more room to breathe and it doesn't have to be about that. Um, but again, that's just me. Don't Donkey? You mean Donkey was saying that Ellie's journey is the same as the Thief's End? Eh. Uh, I can see similarities in the, like, suddenly trying to provide some sort of consciousness about violence. Trying to, uh... Like, notes of, of your nature. Um... Putting you on a path that is obviously self-destructive. I can see some beats there, but I really don't see any similarity apart from that. About some, like... Some f some fairly uh, broad thematic notes, well, hello. Honey. but it's not like Ellie has a. Nope. You're just too skinny. You need to eat more. <laughs> it's not like Ellie has a weird compulsion for adventure. Would you agree that less is more is generally correct when it comes to writing in games? N I mean, you can only say that if the less is so much better than the more. Um, less is more doesn't mean less writing is always better. Less is more means if you can do the same thing with fewer words, it's generally preferred. So like. Uh, I don't necessarily think that less is more in regards to this game, because I don't think any of the individual scene... Mm, I was going to say, there are some scenes that seem, seem to hammer the same points home multiple times. But I think without them, the pacing would be strange. I guess I would rather, I would rather the, the ratio of, like, spoken to video game be the same, but I would... I see a way through, but we got spores. Mask on. Ugh, Why? We have to. All right. It's just us. What if we run into someone? Hmm. Okay. Fine. I honestly wish Ellie displayed more anger. She seemed pretty blah to me. I mean, you can read it on her face. Like, she's a pretty, pretty broken individual. And uh, especially when you're in like 
combat mode. And eventually you're going to slip up in front of someone you shouldn't. Can you explain that in layman's terms? That's a lot of big words. You, have you? But Jesse, you mean the writing thing? I don't know. I was I was kind of rambling, so it wasn't a coherent thought in the first place. If you didn't understand, it's not your fault. Uh, I'll say that. Um, let me think about what I was trying to say. Yes, um, I'm okay with the, like the the volume of the writing and the volume of the cutscenes and the volume of the character interaction. I just you ever been in here before? some subtlety would be nice. And some some screen time dedicated to something other than l like literally trying to inform you about one thing about a character. It seems like and and I'm getting well outside of my depth here because I've never written a game, I've never written a narrative. Um, it does seem like every scene, every canned scene, has like one or two bullet points that it's it's hitting, and. It seems like the dialogue has worked in reverse from those bullet points of like, this scene needs to do X and Y. Therefore, every line and everything will be about getting towards and establishing X and Y. And it just makes it seem very... What's... I'm trying to think of where it is. Just like, just kind of blunt. There's not a lot of nuance so far. Um, there's been some. Act uh, that, last, that last interaction had some nuance. You know, we, we were kind of discussing. It's like, oh, okay, you can read these intentions from what he's doing. It's cute. It reads as believable. It's not bad. But on a meta level, it's like, okay, the point of this is establishing something that's already been well established. It's like, Joel is, Joel is desperate to uh, form meaningful connections with Ellie. Um, which is like, yeah. I mean, we've seen that. I think It's tough because at this point, it's thoroughly breaking down into sub subjective calls, but... It's. It just seems it's yeah. You know, it just seems so direct. It's like he wants to bond with her over guitar. He wants to bond with her over comic books. Like he keeps finding all these things to. I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying here. Really, it's like it, it gets down into really fuzzy. Like there's no way to just solve this. It's um. It's just at this point, to, it just almost feels like that inscrutable, indefinable line between what's good and what's great. But that's such a shitty and vague thing to say, especially since I finished it. So, the context that if they didn't lean on the jewel, obviously trying to connect with Ellie more, and it was just less dialogue from him, so it didn't talk as much. And when he did speak, it meant more. Do you think it would make it better? Hopefully, that made sense. Uh, yeah, I mean that, that's so many ifs deep that it almost it's it's hard to draw meaningful conclusions from that. But yeah, I think it's worse as you play the game. This is what I've heard. Is that the the game is not very subtle about its its messaging and its themes, which whatever I don't need it to be. I prefer subtlety. I prefer things that are subtle and clever. Um, I prefer things that give me headspace to sort of experiment with ideas. Like, this is... Like, doing the old loopity loop, that's some pretty Metal Gear Solid stuff, except... Oh, okay. Woo. I think room to draw my... Oh, I like room to draw my own conclusions and ideas. Yeah, it's... It's... It's, it's good, though. I, I feel... <laughs> I feel like discussing this game is forcing a lot of people, myself included, to develop a better vocabulary about describing what they do and don't like in games. And I think part of that means you have to embrace the subjectivity of some of it. Um, you have to. It, it would be silly to talk about any of the stuff in, from the perspective of objectivity or absolutism. It's nice to derive the message instead of being told what it is. Yeah. Or, or to like, to, to set up a message, provide food for thought, and then let the audience come to conclusions. Um, yeah, it's 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 a really it's a really fascinating play, and it's always it's always a, a subjective call about how much to say and how much to imply and how much to leave, how much to be quiet. I don't think it was a bad call, <laughs> being as blunt as they were. I'm gonna say that, like just from the perspective of this being a mass market game that needs to sell, there's very little room to be subtle in a game that's meant to sell to everyone, because people, by and large, don't like subtlety. Don't like cleverness. 
Being clever makes people feel stupid. Was it the Futurama quote? Can't remember exactly what it is, but. Or fuck with the Metro series? I love the Metro series. I didn't finish Exodus, but I finished 2033 and Last Light. Crap. Maybe shouldn't have done that in full view. I didn't expect her to see that far. Exodus was a bit of a letdown, was it? I was really impressed with the beginning of it, but I only played like the first five or six hours. I'm really trying, but nothing in this game stops moving, even for a little bit. God, the game like... That's the other thing, is there's just something about the way the game pulls to aim. There's just something about the way that the, like... The camera... The camera moves when you're, when you're pulling to sights that just... It doesn't feel like it goes where you think it's going to go. It pretty much does pull the center of screen, but for some reason it doesn't feel like it should. Hmm. Exodus devolves into an open world game and loses focus a bit, which instantly made it lose me. Hmm. I played some of the open world section, like the first one you go to- What the fuck?! Wow. Oh. I was foolish enough to think we were done. Nope, that was stupid. Runners! This is a pretty, a pretty good running gun section. Ow! All right. What? Uh, what? Oh, that's not a shotgun. Okay. Oh wait, like his head is like all over the place. Got more of them. How are you expected to hit this stuff when they? Shooting is as laggy as it is. Oi! There was arbitrary weapon sp sway? Yeah. I know that it's like... I think so. for the torso. I guess I could do that. Uh, that's not as fun, though. I am self-sabotaging to a degree, and I'll admit that, but that's the way I want to play. Like, that's what's fun for me. But, uh, maybe I should I should give up on the ace gamer shots. You can disable weapon sway in the options. Eh. Trying to experience the, uh, director's intent. Always aim center mass is how I play games. Really? You don't try to get those those back-to-back -back combo headshots? Yeah, exactly. Teton understands. Oh, you can't even get up there. All right. It's 24 FPS. Uh, it feels like 30 when nothing's going on, but it feels like it does dip under that. I don't know. I'm sure Digital Foundry has an exhaustive to like the five decimal places uh, frame per second count on this game. That just do way more damage, so it's just harder to hit. Yeah, I mean, I mean that. That uh, that exchange makes total sense. Like that's pretty classic risk reward type mechanics, where you're betting on your your aiming ability to save resources um, and kill enemies faster. But I feel like the game the game feels like it was balanced for aiming mechanics of another game, with the way that the enemies lurch and jump around so fast. It looks like it might be something. Okay, it feels like they're playing they're playing Doom and you're playing Resident Evil. Eternal train me for headshots? Exactly. But I will say that does make it feel really good. Um, problem is like just the just the latency on the sticks. Like I'll let go of the stick and the aim will keep moving for just a little bit. And that usually has me careening past the head, especially when it's like Yeah, somebody's doing some John Wick moves. pretty cool. Also, this lighting is so good.
cool. Alright, this is... This is just straight up uh, Resident Evil 7. <laughs> A big man s smashing through walls. Oh. Oh, come on. That was pretty cool. There's a door right there. You're gonna bust through this wall? Yeah! Really? That's it, huh? Whatever. Oh, okay. Cutscene death. Yeah, they mentioned the exact same mask thing. They did. Yeah. Or maybe that was with Dana? I don't know. But it's like... You already had that conversation. Sure. But we fucking did it. Okay, that's how they take our mask off? Yeah. I think it's... Oh, maybe this is how, like, they, they start foreshadowing. But in reverse shadow, how Ellie... Or, sorry, Abby learned about Joel. I'm curious if they're gonna... What the? Don't wanna? This is just me talking out loud. I am curious to... That is like maybe the one story beat that I am a little curious to discover. Is how what Abby learned about Joel and when and how. But, that's it. I just, I just love that like... I don't know, sometimes you can kind of... You can see the video game scripting of like, there are three wall bustable nodes. And this enemy will find them during this encounter. And we have to write a script where the bad guy will just wait at one of those nodes until the camera swivels to see it. And then he's gonna bust through that wall. It's cool, it works. I just, I like the, I like it when the, the smoke and mirrors works. It's neat. Cause you can, it's easy for me to appreciate all the ways that, uh, could have gone wrong. Quite the fight back there, huh? How often we get a bloater around these parts? Yeah. <laughs> Jesse and Dina are gonna lose their shit when they hear about this. Let's deal with them two anyway. The date, right? Uh, on and off. Why? I hear the way Jesse talks about you. Mm. No, Jesse and I are just friends. <laughs> no, no, I've got a pretty keen eye for these sort of things. Good. So keen with this one. This is this is what I was waiting for. Some kind of interaction between them that doesn't revolve around Joel's singular motivation or Ellie's singular character defining trait. I'm being I'm being unfair by saying that, but it, it was nice to at least have them talk about something that just didn't reinforce that thing. Video game literacy can take you out of the experience when people who are design literate are those the most invested in the hobby and want to consume the media. I, yeah, verbose. I I do think that there's there's a certain magic, like you you'll you'll never look at a magic trick the same way once you know how it works, you know. But what you can do then is then gain a new appreciation for very good magic tricks, and that was a pretty that was a pretty damn good trick, like uh, the uh, mostly just the way that the game seemed to understand where the camera was pointed. It didn't execute big cinematic moments without the player actually looking. Because that's always the... man. That's always the rough part when it comes to uh, to games is you might you might spend one million dollars on an explosion and the player is staring at a twenty dollar tire like trying to bounce up <laughs> against the wall. Hey, the, the, he's... There might not be that uh, that much equipment in the gym, but the showers are primo. Maybe somebody looted it. I'm definitely the tire guy. A lot of people are. Which, sometimes I wonder too. Like... You think you can squeeze through there? I've never heard... I've never heard... Um, game developers describe their relationship to players as antagonistic. Sometimes, maybe. But not in the way that you would think of like. 
what it is? I would like, if it were me, and I were a game de designer, and I made art, and I made this like incredibly dramatic scene, and I've been toiling about the writing for a year and a half, and I was just working with the actors to like get this perfect, and I, oh, it's so great, and man, it makes me cry every time. And then if I were watching like a gameplay test, and I had this incredibly dramatic moment with all these music swells, and oh, so, so much dialogue leading up to this one moment, and the player's just dicking around in the corner with a pipe or like a bottle, I'd be like, man, fuck this guy. <laughs> like, do you know how hard I worked on making these dolls play in front of you, and you're not even going to watch? But uh, that's video games. I'm just surprised there aren't more like... I know they're not allowed, because God knows the gamers would never let them. Uh, but I'm surprised developers don't just, like, come home after day work and pop off about how goddamn stupid <laughs> game players could be. Because you kind of have to design a game around people... I mean, stupid is, I guess, rough, but you have to... You, sh you do have to jingle keys pretty hard. Oh, Axel, that's your job? You're a... Yeah. Game dev? A scripter? Okay. You test games for a living? Oh, okay. Your job is to, to play with a bottle. And make sure you don't see all the, uh, expensive parts. They are kind of depicting Joel as a stern protector here. He's not hes not as completely emasculated as the game, as people seem to claim. But, again, haven't finished the game yet. You gotta ride around dumb players too, unfortunately. As per your earlier point. Yeah, yep. I mean, yeah, if you're making popular entertainment, which is what this is, that's why it got the budget it did. You gotta spell it out for people sometimes. I think you're right. Jackson is a wonderful place, but we got tired of hearing the stories of people suffering everywhere else. We wanted to save lives. We had good intentions. We didn't make it an hour before running into a horde. Now we're bitten. We it wasn't emasculated more, it just got pissy. Yeah. Turning. I, uh... Please tell our family and friends that we're sorry. I guess that's the thing, is, is playing through and, and slowly discovering... Uh, the things that seem justified and the things that kind of aren't. I shot her. I can't take my own life. I'm a Damn. Coward. Also, this is a cutscene where there is one page of a note that she's reading, so that's kind of cute. They were immune, right? I always like it when gameplay. Tr oh shit! Oh shit, dude! Oh. Well, it's. Is she really gonna throw that on him now? She doesn't know what he did, does she? Or did he tell her? After you took me out of the Firefly Hospital. Oh, never mind. We're gonna cover that right now. You said there were dozens of people like me. Yeah. yeah that's what they told me. I've never met another immune person before. Have you? I could be hiding it. You do. Do you believe that? Is now really the time for this? We traveled across the entire country to bring me to the Fireflies. I had so many questions for them. Why did you pull me out of there while I was still unconscious? Because I let them run their tests. And when I saw that they were useless, I got us out of there. How do you know they were useless? Maybe if you, you just would have given them more time, they could have figured Ellie. something out. There was no cure. There's nothing could help these people or anybody else. I know you wish things were different. I wish things were different. But they ain't. And we need to get these kids back to their families. Is there something else you'd like to rehash? What's that sound? Fireworks. 
people are uh, really excited for the fourth. Have been for the last month and a half. <laughs> LA ambience, basically. Yes, but not not in the way, you, not in the straight out of Compton way. That was all right. That was a good scene. It like, it was an interesting conversation that had some layer of depth to it. Uh, it revealed something. It didn't end with a obvious way to feel. So that was pretty good. I liked that. Also, she's she's doing the Bruce Willis stitch up. Hell yeah. Hey, let me do that. He's a good guy. Why didn't you tell him? It wasn't the right time. There you go. What about this? Anything worthwhile? I have so many objections to this as a medical professional. What if she like held it under a lighter for a second? Like really cool, you know, like, and then really went to town on it. This girl, Nora, her unit was assigned to this hospital. They were collecting supplies or something. Are you going to sleep, Pineapple Kittens? This hospital? Yeah. Wait, you're gonna go now? Yeah, we have a lead. Wait, at least just wait for Jessie to rest up. She could be gone by then. Ellie. We know her location. Maybe Tommy does too. What? Nothing. Good. Can you come help me with the door, please? Yep. Womp womp. Follow route five. That should take me to the hospital. I just want to say I appreciate your live analysis and thoughtful discussion playing the game compared to just jokes or forced reactions like many streamers. Followed you for years. This is the first time I've watched you play this game. Loving it. We're both toast. I'm I'm glad to hear that. Easy. There are there are very few games that I will I will dunk on. I think and you know, with a grip of exceptions, there's usually some form of intent or uh, honest effort in every game, and I enjoy I enjoy trying to find that and think about it. There's there's plenty of honest effort and intent in this game, plenty. Never had the chance to play the first game. Uh, hmm. Five, that away. That away. Yeah, this is the first time I played the game. I have not beaten it yet. Is this like a thirty-hour game? I feel like. I feel like it's longer than the first game. The first game, I. And this is my dumb memory, but I feel like the first game was like twelve to fifteen hours, right? It took me twenty-two to twenty-three. Okay, twenty-five hours. Then it'll probably take me thirty. I don't know. I'm slow. I'm gonna put that on talking with chat a lot. I'm gonna put that on on chat. That's your fault. <laughs> It's your fault I'm not beating more video games, even though I play video games all goddamn day. Has nothing to do with the fact that I dick around playing Crazy Taxi uh, today. Took me 26 hours on Survivor difficulty. All right. What's Bruce's Twitch? This is just his name, Bruce Green. With an E on the end. I might I might get through. Might trip you up a little bit. Yeah, at least 10 to 13 hours to go. Okay. Gonna finish the campaigns in distance? Yes. My my video game to-do list is, is long and exhaustive. I can't can't do the hop. Alright. <laughs> yeah, Bryce Groon. Brewer's Groan. Binging. 
Bronze Grants. Bubble Gum Gumption Boy. He's our favorite. What's your time played so far? I think it says on the save file. Hey, yeah, hold up. Let me save. I think it was like 10 hours. Ooh, Scarebro. Thanks for the raid. Uh, and also, Blech for me. Yeah, I have not seen spoilers, dude. Thank you for the sub, but yeah. Somehow. Shockingly. I mean, uh, I should... I should I should clarify. Be 100% accurate here. I have seen spoilers, but I did not read them. If that makes sense. Um, I saw that, like, somebody tried posting them in Twitch chat. I saw somebody... Somebody's going around, tweeting them out to everybody they could. Like, you know, obvious... Obvious troll shit. I guess... I guess I've developed the mental capacity to just disconnect my eyeballs when my eyeballs start seeing things that I know I don't want to read. So my eyes will just, like, scan over the words, and I might see a name or two, but I don't, like, parse any of the connecting words, so... I don't know any of the verbs, or, like... It's possible for me to, like, start reading a spoiler and just, boom, like, shut down. And then look away from it before I read and process it. And that's kind of what I do. Or, what, that's what I did, so I, I really don't know anything about this game. Um, which is cool. Okay. I'll say at the same time, I also have very little investment in the characters. So, uh, I don't know that, that any big twists are gonna really land that hard with me. But, I am, I am mostly excited to just see what happens in the game. Just see what happens. Uh, you know, when something provokes people, it's always interesting to, uh, to take a peep, take a peep at it and try and... From my perspective, I always try to, like, understand the, the reactions rather than... Even if I'm not that, that gassed myself. Uh, Jay Borden. Thank you for the che thank you for the cheer. They do kind of go burr. That is kind of the thing. Um, ooh, sometime soon I'm gonna I'm gonna copy Kraken's Kraken's steez. It was like it was an idea I had a long time ago that I just forgot about. But I'm gonna make I'm gonna make my cheers randomly draw from every vocal line in Half Life One. Can't wait. I, I started doing that and then it just got there are so many. And I have to, like, manually create uh, duplicate rules and stream elements to make uh, random draws work. So it, it can be time-consuming and tedious. I just haven't gotten back to doing it. <laughs> oh, some people thought they were doing a service by spoiling the game? Yeah, you'll find that people who do shitty things often convince themselves uh, they're actually performing a service by doing it. I mean, I feel like it's close to the same... Close to the same vibe as, like, pirating a game and telling yourself you're sticking it to the man. I mean, kind of you are, but it's also like, come on, dude. You want, you, did, you want a free game. So you tell you, I'm not supporting DLC. Okay, you could just not buy it, but... I guess technically you're still not buying it. I'm shitty, that makes me a hero. <laughs> I mean, hey. Is it, aren't, aren't they really The Last of Us? If, uh... Okay. If, um... Let's see if they actually come out here. I'm gonna use a goddamn trip mine appropriately for once in my fucking life. Or they'll just smash out of windows, man! Alright, hold on. There, I did it. Oh boy, there's a lot more now. What, they're running all around where the mine was! What's going on? Did that one already blow up? Maybe it did. Or... Really, bro? The, the six inch gap was just a little too far, huh? Oh my gosh. That's just one of those things, like... Every time I play this game, it just doesn't quite... It just doesn't quite go to plan. Two strikes. <laughs> nice. His AI seemed to turn off there. Yeah, this, this is what's known as a pro gamer move. I thought that was going to be so sick, man. I thought I was going to roll up on those dudes and just take them all out with melee after stunning them. <sighs> all right. Deserters. We know some of the supplies they still contain weapons. Be careful. While it's preferable to capture them alive, do not risk your lives. Any sign of danger, you have our permission to take them out. If they wanted to leave, we could have worked something out, but desertion combined with stealing cannot be tolerated. We need to make an example here. Ugh. 
May your survival be long. May your death be swift. Good luck, Isaac. I do think it's kind of... It, it is a little... It, it is an interesting decision to use the entire first part of the game to set up Abby as a villain and then have Isaac be the villain you never even meet. Although maybe Abby is Isaac. I don't know. Oh, you skip most of the notes, VCM? Yeah. craft stuff. Look at all these bottles and stuff I got. I got, I got stuff everywhere and stuff all over the place. Think you left a mine in the street? Yeah, I, I think I did. I was I was hoping that it would uh, it would detonate and kill enemies in a very cool way. That did not exactly happen. Uh, I don't... Items don't Items you can pick up don't glow when you're, um... I don't even have enough bullets to use that. Oop, okay, that's not pick up, though. Um... Like, it's not gonna be visible, right? I'm worried that I'm gonna step on it and blow up. Right. You feel nosy reading other people's notes? Interesting. That's... I never... I never really... I've never heard people acting like that in games that have text logs, but that's interesting. I like that. Mr. Mackerel, thanks for the Prime sub. Uh, is it this guy? Yeah, it looks like it's just you. Okay, they blink. Okay, maybe that's that's the visual tell so you don't blow yourself up. I feel nosy too, but I embrace it. I mean, I uh, they're all dead, so um, most of these people have uh, have fallen to into violence and murder, which, uh, as we know from The Last of Us Part Two, murder is bad. cares about LGBT and honestly in this game it's just an excuse to hate this game even more mm. I I, 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 w I can't go so far as to tell people what they're mad about but you can always you can always read a lot into the proportionality of response um, that's a big word which basically I, I don't even know if that's a real word but to me it's like the response to this game was so inordinately heated um, that it, 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 to me, that's a huge red flag that something else is going on, aside from just being mad about a, how a sequel turns out. I mean, again, it, well, maybe not again, but it is, to me, it's kind of like the Gamergate litmus test of, like, you're way too mad about this if it's just about that one thing. That doesn't make any sense. You're you're so there's there's a, a a a vicious anger behind it. It's not just like hey, this game I would have liked it to be different. No, it was it was the way in which people not only like people were primed to not like it. Um, like when people come at something, oh jeez, it was clear that a lot of people came at this game ready to not like it because of early early material. I think a lot of people felt felt preached at, or it's that, you know, old forced diversity charm, but like, as it's becoming less and less acceptable to say those things without sounding like a goddamn idiot, because it makes you sound like a goddamn idiot, people just find other Weasley ways to justify their, their vicious reactions. Um, they'll find all sorts of incongruous things to get upset about uh, that don't actually make sense, and. Uh, by all rights, sometimes aren't even borne out by the source material they're getting mad about. But, uh... I, it, it was kind of a perfect storm of negativity, though, too. I think I think it would be silly to say, at this point, given, like, the review bombing and everything else that happened, that, uh... Like, there wasn't, there wasn't something there. You know? Why review bomb... Like, I, you can read a lot into, into the review bombing when and how it happens and for what titles and there's there is a very clear uh extremely extremely clear uh pattern each individualized case has its own like bespoke excuse of why it's not about homophobia or sexism or racism but uh mm, it's still there i guess i did just throw out a lot of ores some good stuff in there all right 
Well. Let's go get it. The rope puzzles are the best. That said, here's here's the frustrating thing, and the thing that I I, I do empathize with, is it uh, it it is a is it a pain it is a pain in the ass when you don't like something for reasons other than that, and then that element is there, and as a result, woo, oh, as a result, uh, it's it dilutes it dilutes your your legitimate concerns. Um, I guess again, kind of like. Throwing it back to the old chestnut of Gamergate. Like, if, if you actually were upset about ethics in games, it was impossible to be a part of that and not be conflated. And people will people would, like, get to their guns and be like, brah, it's still an important cause. Like, maybe, but you got to back off now. They took it over. Unfortunately, that's how it, how it happens sometimes. At least the rope is our friend. Can you not just climb? I guess you can't climb up glass. Except if it goes to Tsushima, I am, I think. Uh-oh. I didn't see that. That was actually that was actually a pretty neat reveal, I have to be honest. You forgot the writing on the wall? Oh yeah, you have to go up to it and hit an interaction button, right? I keep forgetting that even if I see it with my eyeballs, that doesn't mean that Ellie Video Game saw it. Yes, thank you. Mm hmm. So many fun things that get co-opted by shit bags. Yeah, they do. It's uh, it's it's been happening since time was time. Unfortunately, what do I do here? How do I? We just started. Oh, I already said that. Okay. Jesse's here. This is good. He can help protect Dina. Uh, fuck the WLF. Um, felt good having him around to deal with the WLF. Maybe he can help us find those, uh, find these people more quickly. I don't want to hear anything about turning back. Feel her love. Who the fuck are these people? Why do they do this? Feel it. Feel it. I've started my backlog. Ooh. What's, uh, what's your first backlog game? I don't know. I'm. I would say I'm. I'm having so far more fun with this game than the last one. Mostly due to the the what I would consider pretty fundamental gameplay improvements. I'm. I'm very much about that. I like that quite a lot. All right. Let me think about this. I thought I was gonna like find a way to swing over to that other thing but hmm so let's see here rope puzzles yeah I, I actually I don't I think the environmental puzzles are pretty good too I think they do a decent job of busting up the uh, the flow of the game uh, in a good way like uh, giving giving you an activity that mostly revolves around environmental interaction is a, is a pretty great thing so let me see here what if I drop off here haha now I can swing here we go this is how to do it this is this is for sure how to do this puzzle. No! Ellie, what are you doing? Come on. Come on, Ellie. Come on. Hey. Come on, Ellie. Wait, what? Hold R oh it's R1. Okay. Now we got it. We got this. We got this. This'll work. This'll work. We got this. Here it comes. Here it comes. Just gonna swing right over there. And here it comes. And real quick, just Swing right over there. Oh, hmm, didn't quite work. Didn't quite work. Didn't quite get that one. Didn't quite get it. Didn't quite get it. Hmm. But they, like, are her are her efforts and stuff angrier now? Like, rah, rah. if there if that rail weren't broken, I feel like you could throw the rope over that. Um, and then use that as a swing. But I feel like it's broken specifically because they want a message to you that you can't do that. Um, there is a hoop on the end, which could also imply that you gotta... You gotta horseshoe this thing around something, but... Try it. I will try it.
Hold on a second. My 8,000 IQ might have produced a, a viable solution. Plant cranked. What are you doing? Throwing? Just telling me the solution like that. Big, big old backseater. Yeah, there's a lot of throwables around here. Luckily, luckily, I think I had, yeah, more or less come to it. The f right is, uh, right as that was in there, but <laughs> blow the building up. Yeah, let's knock the building over. Huh. feels good. That may not be the right one. I might have to get it over that one. I feel like, yes, that's the case. Okay. I wonder if I can do both. Maybe the rope won't hit the, hit the ground anymore. And if that's the case, that might actually get it stuck. Well, let's try it. What's the worst that could happen? No, it's okay, Cranks. Don't worry about it. It's just video games, man. I ain't mad. Huh. Great. Ooh. Use the elevator. You got it. Yeah, this game is actual exploration. No, it's... I, I... There's, there's a lot that is... I think inarguably fundamentally improved. Like, as a video game. I think it I think it pretty completely satisfies everything you could want from a sequel. I guess in turn maybe not explicitly in terms of the beats of the plot. Um, I could see how that would lead people. I mean, I obviously can't comment on that, but in terms of the production and the gameplay design and the man just Okay, that worked. We got this. We got this. Give a little swing. Yeah. All right, give me that treasure. All right. Here we go. That's cool. I think the shotgun slide actually moved. He took the shell out of it. this stuff. I like reading notes. I like poking through meticulously detailed environments. Simon, I hope you never read this note. I hope I can crumple it up, burn it when you return for us. It's been, I don't even know how many hours since you left. I went out to look for you and those hooded people spotted me. They shouted at me, called me a sinner, and then started shooting. I ran back and barricaded the door. All I can hear is the rain, but I'm worried they're still out there. Should I run? Should I stay? I feel completely paralyzed. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I got so sick. I'm sorry I let you go to the hospital by yourself. I'm sorry I didn't stay hidden like you told me. If anything happens to me, I want you to know how much I love you. Please come back. I'm so scared. Says, says Paige. Times are rough. Times are rough, huh? So cold in the D. Oh, Pistastic, you going to sleep? All right. Thanks for hanging tough. I know you were tired. Hopefully you have a good sleep. Shift. Ooh, that looks like a Teen Titan. Shift. At first glance, Gail Price looks and acts like a typical teenager. Mood swings and all. But those mood swings power her ability to increase the velocity of matter. When happy, she directs its power outwards, increasing the speed of her allies and throwing her enemies off balance. When sad, she directs this power inward. Allow her to outrun her enemies and making the rest of the world feel sluggish. Though powerful, she is an unpredictable ally and an easy target for the mind manipulation tricks of the motivator. Cool. And all kinds of nuts and bolts. I like the game. I like parts of it. I do like parts of it. At its best, it's it's very fun and like um 
changes the experience that I was merely okay with from one into experience that I very much enjoy. Uh, but those moments are, I want to say, maybe 30 to 40 percent of the game so far. These beats I'm, I'm actually okay with too. I feel like the, yeah, the open environments I very much like, especially given how absurdly good the environments are. The environmental puzzles I'm super into. Um, there's a lot to like, even on a, like a base video game level. Um, that said, I'm not su super not far enough to have opinions about the story though, because I know that that's what turns a lot of people weird. I also, um, I'm led to understand that the, even the story or sorry, the gameplay loop gets a little funky later on in the game, so... I'm, uh, I'm digging it so far, but, uh, people say it, it, get, it hits some swerves. Game is 80% story. Mm, I guess depending on how you play it. I've had plenty of sequences... I wish they were longer, but, uh, I've had plenty of sequences where, uh... I'm playing a video game. Technically now I'm playing a video game. Even if the quiet environmental parts are also story, story-esque. How far into the game is this? I'm about 12 hours in, which is about half by some people's reckoning. Maybe a little over half. So, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. This is by no means like a 2 out of 10 game, any way you slice it. Although, who knows, man? Who knows where it's going to go? I keep having to disclaim that. Because so many people seem to say that the last half of the game kind of does some very strange and unexpected and contentious things. Denied. You don't have any mods? I'm the mod. I'm gonna ban you? I'm gonna ban you. Let's see what they got in here. The story is 3 out of 10, only the story. There's... I've had... I've definitely had 3 out of 10 moments with the story. And that, I, like I said, I'm not even... I'm not even into it so far, but I also tend to be a pretty harsh critic about narrative, like written narrative. And I also tend to, I'm, I'm typically of the opinion that, that linear narrative, like, needs to stay in its own little house. That was probably bad. Oh well. Somebody in here is probably already dead, so who cares. I, uh, either, either through, I have, I have my own rational process for, for thinking this way, but... It also is kind of my my history with narrative in games, but I do think the way the JRPGs typically do it is, is probably the best. Of just being like, it's story time. It's sitting you down and telling you a story. And then later, like, and then clicking into gameplay mode. I think games like Persona 5 get kind of cute, where story progression is still tied to player choice. But the actual beats of the story, aside from some very, uh, some very binary decisions are part of the narrative, which means they're not even going to pretend that the movements and beats of those things are influenced by uh, gameplay. Then again, this game doesn't really do that either. It doesn't really present the illusion that, that your choices matter. Merely providing commentary on the, the nature of the game you're playing, or the nature of the actions you're taking. Man, this still fill the supplies. Potentially. Again, I haven't finished it. 9 out of 10 me, we're on it for different reasons. And that's totally fine. Um, I think... I've, I have read a couple of reviews that, that kind of approach it with my chosen reviewing method, which is um, analyzing the success to which they executed on their vision, rather than... In, or rather, in addition to um, providing subjective commentary on the, the quality of that vision. Um, and a lot of what I've read is basically like, the execution is superb, the intention maybe not so much, but that's up to you. Um, so, I like games like that. Ones that are executed capably, but, uh, m you know, may not be your thing. Uh, Fuck you. That was awesome. Back, me. That was pretty cool. I am I am a huge fan of, like, Providing fake safety, that was that was pretty sick. I'm I'm okay with that. Wow. All right. Someday I'll I'll aim, but it's not today. That's why headshots are kind of important though, because you don't get one-hit kills without them. Fuck. 
Oi. Fuck! Ah! Oh! Like, they have better accuracy and they shoot faster than you do. And like every. Uh, I don't know. Fuck people. That's fine. That's that's why you get supplies. I I feel like, I feel like to some degree you almost have to think about this in terms of like JRPG rules. I guess second time I brought a JRPGs for no reason, but that you're you're going to take damage, or or even like Resident Evil rules. There are hallways where you're not meant to get through without getting chomped, and that's why they give you healing items. So I need to stop treating like getting hit or missing shots as a frustration point and more of like, oh, that's the game. Only a poor craftsman blames his tools. Uh, in this case, the tools are actually a little busted. This game is kind of uh, unforgivably laggy sometimes. For for what they ask you to do, um, sometimes it is a little is like, come on, there's no way I can make that shot with the weapon sway and also the, just the input lag. But I know you can turn all that stuff off. Fire rate, draw speed. Get a 50 cal barrel on this thing. Also, like the idea that somehow Ellie was able to turn a handful of butt of bolts into a, a scope. For real, though, like that was a cool sequence, especially since you could hear him coming. I like that quite a bit. That was nice. This is on a pro. Yeah, Steven. Steven is correct. Uh, sorry, I was actually just checking. Checking to see if my boy Bruce is... Wait, is he coming back on tonight? Are there any gooses still around? Uh, sometimes he takes the evening off. I didn't know if that was going to be tonight or not. Oh, he is? Okay. Oh, wait. He... Oh, he's coming back with Satisfactory. Okay. Why not just shoot Ellie in the head from behind? Maybe we'll find out. Maybe there's lore. Yeah, the fact that there were, like, hydroponic vegetables growing in here should have been a tell that there were still living people around. That's why I kept doing the, like, survival site, but it wasn't showing me anything. Because they, they wanted to they wanted to get me. Alright. Hey, Melissa. I'm leaving this here just in case you decide to join us after all. We're moving on from the safe house at first light. I've stalled the others as long as I could, but Isaac has to be looking for us by now. The fate of the last group of deserters is still fresh in our minds. The plan is still to head south to see if those rumors are true. Maybe it's all bullshit, but I'll take hopeful bullshit over Isaac's fanaticism any day of the week. Remember who we were. The w WLF took us in, but they're not our people. I really wish you had left the stadium with us. Hopefully you still do. Gee, so. Okay, so they were... They were not part of the WLF. Ugh. I thought I was a wolf. I like how that's her take. Not, oh my god, I just killed a bunch of people who were not part of the WLF, but... They thought they thought I was. Ooh. Whoa. So this is just that's Rainbow Three material, huh? Oh boy, yeah. I need I need trip mines to explode more. More explosive arrow. I need 60 pills to be able to just stab people right in the neck. I lost so much so much respect from Ellie at this part. Oh, because she killed a bunch of quote-unquote innocent people? How much did I need for stealth kill? Ooh! Now we're doing it! Yes! Trophy time! Trophy get! Big trophy time! Disco Joe, thanks for uh, gifting a sub. And Harry, thanks for the thanks for the sub. I love this. I love and I love you, Gandalf's magic gay dick. Thanks for the prime. Good to see you again. Thank you guys for the subs. Thank you. 
Yeah, quintessential gamer just bags another sick trophy. Boom, knocked him down. The innocent people ambushed her and tried to kill her. Well, yeah, they thought she was part of a fanatical army, so... Yeah. That's kind of neat. Nobody's innocent here. I think that's kind of the idea, showing you a, a post-morals world. Which is weird, because why would you then try and... Well, I'm assuming too much about on behalf of a game that I haven't played yet, so... I just just kind of thinking into the ether though like why would you why would you try and and construct a moral point f from a story told from an immoral amoral I should say standpoint moral relativists are cooming yeah <laughs> still a drag to platinum what's uh what what's the beef about plat like, what, what's the hard part of platting this game is? I mean, collectibles, you can just get a, use a guide. Well, he was innocent in the first one because she was young. Now she's grown and learned a lot from Joel, who was morally questionable at best. Yeah. Oh, you got the shirt! King Broken. Awesome! That's great to hear. Uh, that reminds me, one of those got returned, and I don't know why. So that's fun. I'm going to have to figure that out. But only one of them. i got to mail something to Denmark, I think, and I don't know how their addresses are formatted, so I'm scared. I'm afraid to buy international shipping and then have it, have it be formatted wrong and then just get returned. Oh, it's just collectibles, easy plat, no difficulty based trophies, thank god. Yeah, that seems to be less and less of a thing uh, as time goes on. No difficulty based trophies, which is a bummer. I did like difficulty trophies. Um, but that's fine. I get it. Uh, Bruce did want to discuss Last of Us 2 and how far you are in the game. Like right now? Or we're doing we're doing the potty tomorrow. We got a bit of a podcast tomorrow, so maybe it maybe it was that. I hate trophy difficulties because most games suck at difficulty design. That is true. Cinephilia accusations, but f for me at least, that is uh oh I get it. Okay. That's cute. So I have to like push it up the ramp. Let it roll down, and then try and open the gate before it gets there, so I can... Prop it open? I'm sure that's what they want me to do. Yeah. Don't tell him how to solve it. I was just too smart. People who didn't have time. Didn't have time. It's also the only two things you can interact with in the room, so it's like... As, as fun as environmental puzzle solving can be, is it really a puzzle if there's only two things to do? It reminds me of that, what was that game? Like, everyone's, oh, this game's so good. And I was like, it's kind of not, though. Like, it was a, it's like an M.C. Escher-style puzzle game. But calling it a puzzle game is deceptive because there's never a puzzle. It's just do the exact next thing you can do in any circumstance. Miss some goodies up on the lift, unreachable now. Oh, okay. Oh, you needed this to get in there? Okay, well, ain't that the way. Alright, right now I'm not sure when, but last we raided him from your stream. He was inquiring how far you were in the game, so he was hoping to catch up with you. Oh, okay. It probably won't take that long. Thoughts on Puzz 3D? <laughs> Best game ever made. I'm a Picross man. I was born a Picross man, and I'll die a Picross man. By that description, those puzzle is Portal not a puzzle game. It is because um, puzzles have like the puzzles in Portal eventually have branching paths and like like there's a difference between having an environment where you can play with objects and there being one proper solution between a uh, a game where there's a hallway and at the end of that hallway is a button you hit to solve the puzzle. That was that was the thing I was thinking about. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Bruce is further than I am. Um, I've been, I have been taking my sweet, sweet time and playing a ton of other stuff. Talking about that mobile game where you play as a bird girl. No. Are you talking about Gree? Um, no. This was, this came out like four years ago or so. It was all trippy and it looked creepy. 
but uh or it looked cool i can't remember the name of it there was a sequel to it i think it wasn't the witness no the witness holy shit it doesn't get more puzzly than the witness that's some real some real crap it wasn't the bridge um closer though i'm not it's not fez because fez also had real puzzles dang it you're just like a little person walking around a little MC, MC Escher landscape and you would like step on platforms and then other platforms would squish together. Not Limbo, no, this was like, this was like on mobile. Um, not inside either. Those are platformers. Braid, no. <laughs> Monument Valley, that's it, I think. I think you, I think you got it, Nutbuster. Let me, let me Google it. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think you got it. Thank, thank you for uh, dealing with my extremely vague descriptions. Wait, Von Monument Valley is a place? Huh. Well, I learned. Yeah, it was absolutely Mon Monument Valley. I remember playing that and being like, this isn't actually a puzzle game. Like, all, all I have to do is the exact next thing that I ever have to do. My girl can carry a lot of guns. I mean, yeah. I remember Joel at the end of the first game, he had like seven guns on his back. It was Angry Birds. It was Angry Birds. It was Minecraft. Actually, it was Minecraft. I forgot about Minecraft, but it was Minecraft. Nice. Breaking the glass does feel really, really satisfying. It may be a small thing, but I appreciate it. It matters. Oh, that's right. That's why I was get grabbing my phone to, uh, to turn the lights on in here. It's getting a little dark. Let's go with, uh... There it is. This is this feels like a good lightscape for where we are right now. There we go. Did you play Echo Chrome on PSP? I don't think I did. I think it may have been one of those games that I bought and never actually played. Oh, King Egg, you off for tonight? Okay, cool, man. Thanks for hanging out. Hopefully you have a good night. Oh wait, right. I gotta... I popped that window. I gotta go get my goodies. Hup. Hup. Nice. I always do like the little vocal feedback in that regard of almost like Ellie's telling you, the player, that you did a good job. Guiding her into this room to find pick upables. Ooh, there's a pick up -able. Yeah, nice. That dude looks cool. Former army sharp yeah, former army sharpshooter and seasoned bow hunter. This vigilante's path was forged when his family was caught in the crossfire between the new dogs and Society of Champions. <laughs> Destroyed by grief, he turned into the most dangerous game. Not human, but superhuman. Donning high-tech camouflage and claiming the moniker Arch Enemy, he's menaced both sides of the war with his Hunter's Instinct compound bow and arsenal of high-tech traps. So he's basically like Deathstroke. I guess Deathstroke isn't really a hunter of superheroes, just a mercenary. Who knows? Who knows? That was a bit on the nose. Welcome to Last of Us Part 2. Oh, the villain from Spider-Man, Craven. Yeah, I, I guess that's closer to Craven. Craven's just like a, a big game hunter, right? And he got so good at hunting that he wanted to hunt superheroes for the sport. That is kind of a thing, though, isn't it? Of a dude who's so badass and uh, lacks moral centers that they they hunt superheroes just for the sport. Is that a backup gun in case you missed a gun from earlier in the game? That seems that seems to happen a couple times. Yeah, that there's some guns you can get earlier. But, uh, if you miss them, there will be more obvious ones later. You know, it's kind of... It's just pretty good game design principles. Are you going to scree at me? Are you going to scree? Are you going to hit you with this bottle? You're not going to... You're not going to get me? Oh. Yeah. They're trying to telegraph to the player pretty hard. Oh! Okay, there. That's... Alright. There, there, there's... That's classy. The, like, the misdirect. 
of, uh, of, of giving you the obvious scare point, having it not happen, and then having a scare point right after. I'm, I'm always a big fan of the, the misdirection. Hmm. These are the worst enemies? Oh, like, are they like armed infected or something? I guess I'll find out. They really got you. Oh, there's like stealth enemies? Well, they can't get me if I've got trip mines. What's up, Andrew? Earlier you were saying you're a big critic when it comes to writing a narrative. Curious what games you feel executed excellent storytelling? Um, for me, the games that succeed most in storytelling are the ones that do not try to execute beyond their scope. Um, why, is that, why is that red there? Oh, does, does red mean I can place a mine there? Um, so, uh... I think I think games like like a game like Persona, Persona three, four, and five, four and five especially, operate very well within the bounds of their limits, and also kind of operate in a tier of of like teen fiction. Um, I think Red Dead Two uh, excelled beyond teen teen pop fiction, which is where a lot of video games tend to reside. It's just kind of goof entertainment with pretty predictable outcomes and stuff like that. Um, Red Dead 2 was like... Oh, Jesus. For me, it was like book-level writing. Like a really good book. Uh, I think Control, narrative-wise, uh, you know, didn't... I don't think had a lot to say about the profoundity of the human race. But there's just so much inv investment into the world of Control uh, and the setup of it. And the internal consistency of it that I, I have to, you know, put one up on the board for that. So it's tough because I think I think game or story in games comes in a lot of forms and fills a lot of functions. So it's tough to. Uh, do they have omnipresent vision? And also just disappeared, like teleported. Oh, is this like is this a is this a sequence that kind of breaks game logic for the sake of scares? Psychonauts? Psychonauts was cute. Psychonauts was like a really charming kids show. What the fuck? Um It had it had tender moments and cool characters and the way the way that like Psychonauts I feel the way that Psychonauts succeeded was uh, in um in working abstractions of certain characters into the levels. So that's when like that's good writing in the sense that uh That, like, the writing is more than just a character lecturing you about the plot. Um, you can get bits from different perspectives and, and in different ways. But, like, is that good storytelling? It's a form of it. And I think it was executed well. Oh, dude, Soma? Yeah. Soma Soma's a game that... that uh... What the? Alright. Not only has uh, had a great story, but it was told really well. And also left you with... Like, it didn't, it didn't presume to tell you what the game was about. I mean, it did. There was a narrative there, but... There was a whole philosophical layer to Soma that they did a really good job laying out in front of you. And having you play through some very uh, confusing situations. And not, uh, not tell you, this is what to think. Or this is what, this is what the game wants you to believe. So, Soma, Soma was handled so well. And then, yeah, there's things like Yakuza 0 that are just, like, over the top. And have, like, good moments that are memorable. I kind of think about that with like that's to me that's Metal Gear. It's like it's over the top with great moments, but uh, you know, hard to call it masterclass writing because it is so, so wacky. In fact, you can't see your flashlight. 
I mean, the flashlight is not super helpful, to be honest. Like, survival vision is 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 uh, a million times more more helpful. But yeah, I guess I might as well leave the flashlight on. I don't know. It's like, it just doesn't feel good to me. Ah, all right. Oh yeah. Oh no 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 no. Oh. Are you dead? I can't tell. Jesus. These enemies can avoid your survival vision? Yeah. I could kind of tell they were like sort of blinking out of out of survival vision without moving away. So it, it's a tough question. Um like what what is good writing in games? I, I feel like the uh, Jesus Christ, Andrew. Thank you for gift Thank you for gifting out 20 subs, dude. That's a lot. Why? Mm, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Ah, uh, damn. That's all I can do. All I can do is say thank you. Well, hey, all I can say this. If, uh, if you received an emote or a gift sub from Andrew, maybe toss a little thanks his way. Andrew's out here doing nice things for people. Thank you. Yeah, that was a fat sub bomb. Um, but yeah, I, I guess regarding regarding the evaluation of, of story and writing in games, it takes so many forms and is expressed in so many ways that it's... Not only is it um, difficult to compare game writing to any other form of writing, but it's difficult even to compare game writing to other game writing, uh, given how vast and, and wide the difference in implementation of, of storytelling can be. Or you can show boob. Yeah, Vic Rattler, that's a good point. Has a game ever been brave enough to show some show some boob? Because maybe that would be good. Oh boy, I hear, I hear that. This is a cool encounter. I mean, given given how I want to play this game, which is slow and not not relying on like quick uh, quick reaction aiming and stuff, this is this is pretty good. Yeah, Disco Elysium so far has been has been probably the most impressive uh, implementation of more linear, more uh, traditional story and writing in games. Um, and and the way that it excels is that it actually works in choice and game mechanic into the storytelling beats. So it, it does the thing that Bioware games tried to convince you they were doing, but actually weren't. Um. That's true. Remember to pay it forward if you don't want Tug Nuggets to show up to your place with Avatar. Yeah. When Tug Nuggets has Avatar on on, on DVD, on double-sided DVD, you know it's going to be a late night. Shit. Ah. See, like, these enemies act like Gears of War enemies. They stay in place and they pop their heads out. And they keep their heads nice and steady. Um, but I guess that's them thinking that they're hidden. I think a lot of games like Last of Us have basically movie or TV show style writing. Yeah. I mean, Spider-Man. Um, it's, uh, it's narrative told through giant cutscenes and text logs. Um, audio conversations. You know, you're basically using every, every media delivery asset you have available to you and cramming, cramming them all full of lore. Wolfborn, thank you so much for the 36 months of subs. That's a lot of subs, dude. Thank you. Mr. Nachos, thanks for the Prime sub. I like your work. The inventor of nachos is here, everyone. You've given the world a blessing. I can't wait to eat nachos again. Don't diss Spider-Man. It's the test program for the new PS5 Solid State. Yeah. Well, one does the game. The writing, though, left quite a bit to be desired. Well, people like it. Turns out, for uh, popular entertainment, people like... 
big, loud, obvious, uh, risk-free storytelling. You know. Oh, it's already been uh, upgraded. That's just a fact, man. It's uh, it's it's almost like it's a uh, it's almost like uh, an imperative. The more you say, or the more you try to say, the less people are going to want to hear it. Or the more definite your message is, the less people it will appeal to. That makes sense, right? Uh, how do you take risks with superhero stories anymore? Uh, there's plenty of ways to take risks. It's just things that take risks don't get budgets because people don't watch them. And it, I'm not saying that as like, oh, human ugh, people need to be smarter. Like, I'm not trying to be pretentious about it. I, I hope I'm just... Like, to me, it's it's just practicality. Every so often you get a Last of Us Part 2. Where somebody did spend a lot of money to try and say something risky. Uh, and, you know, it causes some burbles here and there. Some burbles and gurgles. The more information you put out, the more ambiguity people will create for it. Tacat, that's a really, that's a really good point. The only, the only creator I've seen that can, like, try to put out a nuanced message and still make those works mass media and, and popular is Chris Nolan. Um, but I do think he does some amount of, of sanitizing of his ideas to make them appropriate for mass market movies. Yeah, Neil Breen, actually. <laughs> it was Neil Breen. How did you know it was Neil Breen? I mean, I guess it was obvious it would be Neil Breen, given the, the lead-up to saying that. Spike Lee? Eh... I mean, his movies got mass market. I would, I would say, kind of. I, I wouldn't say his movies ever got mass market, actually. Lars von Trier. Whoa. Is it raining? Oh, there's water. Wow. I like Nolan, but he has beef with linear storytelling. I guess that's true. Yeah. He keeps making movies who, who, by their function, do not tell you the story in a direct path. I mean, that was his, like, memento. He keeps doing it. I mean, wasn't it, like, following also was kind of told out of order? Um, yeah, Ryan Johnson made risky decisions. That's true. Yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like uh, there hasn't been enough credit given to the risk takers. Um, just... Just because of the bravery it does take to take risks? I don't know. Maybe that's... Oh, I'm going to be the Call of Void jump in river? You got it. This this will be the Tomb Raider style death we've been waiting for. Yup! Wow. Can't think of a single Nolan film that's fully sequential. I mean, like Batman Begins, right? Dark Knight? Ryan Johnson's first movie, Brick, is amazing. Mm, I dis I disagree, but uh, I to me, Brick and a lot of uh, a lot of Ryan Johnson's movies are the they think they're way more clever than they are. Uh, that's that's always like the thing that just irks me about it, and that's totally like that 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 feels like so much more of a me problem than a, than a movie problem. But it, it gets on my nerves. It really does. Like uh, every. Looper just felt smarmy at times, just like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, fine. And like Brick, eh, it had it would it had its gimmick, like it was cute, that it was a noir high school story. Like I okay, I get it. I feel like it never, it never was more than, than Mr. Like it was never more than noir plus high school. Like the the two didn't combine in an interesting way. For me, at least. Yeah, that's bad. Oh boy, that's bad. Ow, I'm getting slapped. Ow. Ow. Can't. Gotta move. Damn it. Fuck. All part of the plan. Yep. Okay. I was doing it to save bullets. Knives Out was enjoyable. 
So it, it took me, like, I, I, I fully 100% top to bottom really like Knives Out. Um, and the, gotta be a way out of here. the thing that occurred to me is that it worked because there was a character in the movie who was the personification of, of being clever, you know? The, gentle, the gentleman uh, detective, like, they establish early on, he's the one who's going to be, like, pulling you through this this thing and, exp and expressing his cleverness in his, his charming southern way. So the fact that there was, like, a, a an insert in the movie, and the fact that it was a murder mystery to, to start with, which means it's going to be a series of clever ahas. Like, the framework worked a lot for Ryan Johnson's style for me, and that it didn't make, it didn't make the, hey... Like, look at this quirky thing. Like, it, it made that, like, well, yeah, it's part of a murder mystery. There's going to be a series of look at, looking at quirky things. Um, so, yeah, the, the framing device of Knives Out um, and also the, just the performances were so good. But the writing was good. Like, it was a good, it was a good mystery. It told well. I feel like the cast... I feel like the, felt like the cast had way more potential. You, men, you think? I thought the cast... Made that movie sing. Daniel Craig being the comedic comic relief in a lot of scenes helped relieve the smarminess too. Yeah. Dan I mean, Dan like Daniel Craig, the movie hinged on his performance and he, he absolutely nailed it. Yeah, the family was entertaining too. But that's So that's, that's kind of the wonderful thing about, man, you want to... I feel like Knives Out is a masterclass in characterization. Um, compared to, and, and, and uh, I hate to make negative leaning comparisons, but like the way that this game has to con kind of consistently reinforce what the characters are about and what their motivations are, you you want to like you want to throw it back to the less is more concept. Knives Out in two like two scenes can it full like give you a pretty good idea of what like eight or nine characters are or where their heads are at. And granted, there's still plenty of wiggle room there, but. They did such a good job. Showing, like, the smash cuts of all the interviews right at the beginning not only tells you what the characters are like, but what the characters think of the other characters. It gives you so much good nonverbal information. Um, sometimes literally verbal information. Here but, we go. Uh, yeah, that game was great. I feel like I probably should have done another sweep of this area, but... We got another... Got another get through the door sequence, so I'm not going back in there. Oh, base, the SJW slash alt-right characters felt weird. Felt like there was supposed to be some commentary there, but it didn't result in anything. So that's the that's the thing, though. Isn't that cool? That there are characters who are just that, and it's not, like, they don't feel the need to make a point about that. That's just who they are. I, I like that. I like that a lot. Do I accept a Puzz 3D challenge? Probably not. I want to eat dinner. Someone did ask about the zombie swimming. Good point. Well, now we know. Like, I I, I desperately loved that. And and to, to me, this also bought me a lot of points with, with what I perceive to be Ryan, Jensen, Ryan Johnson's usual smarminess or, or trying to be smart. Uh... I appreciated that there were, like, political discussions in the movie, but it wasn't, like, the scene wasn't about that discussion, and it wasn't about the director or the writer pushing their opinion in, or trying to make characters look stupid that they disagreed with. It wasn't about any of that. It was an actual scene, a believable scene, between characters saying what those characters would say. And it was there just long enough that it needed to be to establish the characters, and then it moved on into where it needed to go. Like, it was, ugh, it was so good. I, I did appreciate that. I, uh, an unusual amount of restraint, I guess, maybe? But... See Ryan Johnson make a Deus Ex movie? I could see him doing pretty good at that. I feel like Deus Ex is not very subtle about its themes either, <laughs> so that might be a good match, actually. I like vast uh, majority of Ryan Johnson's movies personally. Yeah, I don't think they're poorly. Oh shit! I don't think they're poorly made movies, but 
uh, they, there's just, they just rub me the wrong way. And that's, that's a me thing. I'm, uh, I can, I can admit that. Um, there's, there's just something about me and things that I find personally grating more than, more than I could actually justify saying that they're poorly made. I'm back to using this. Want him to have his own Star Wars trilogy? I do too, Colin. Or maybe like a science fiction trilogy. Um, but yeah, it was a bummer the way it worked out. Um, I liked the ideas in Last Jedi. I liked the inversions. But the problem is he like he didn't set up what he was going to invert, and then he didn't pay off the inversion. So it was like it was the worst of all possible worlds for me at least. Uh, And, and boy, boy did that movie just completely steep in Ryan Johnson's smarminess. At least for me. At least for me. It was, it was consistently trying to tell you how smart it was. But that's just me. That's just me. Actually, it's a lot of people, but it's also me. Uh, how many hours into the game? I want to say about 12. Finally. Damn. What was that? Oh, an indicator that I can upgrade. That's right. Yeah, what's George Miller on these days? Fury Road is... It's hard to find a problem with that entire movie. Man, Fury Road's so good. Well, there was no plan for the Disney trilogy. I mean, there was no plan for the original trilogy either. You know what there was a plan for? The prequels. I don't know that having a plan necessarily guarantees you to have success. Uh can't criticize Last Jedi, that makes you sexist. Yeah, I've never been I've never been a fan of that dynamic. I, I, I would have liked our I, I get bummed when like the the movie like I felt actively misdirected by Last Jedi. Like a lot of people I think. I think there were active things in the movie to make you dislike Holdo at the beginning. Aside from just the the like oh yeah, gotta use motion controls. Aside from just the mathematics of putting her against Poe Dameron, who was an, like a... Or having her clash with Poe Dameron, which was an audience favorite. Like, okay, so... Number one, you're already, you're already telling us to not like this character because... We like Poe, and we like heroes. This is a galaxy of heroes. Um, so she's already... She's being kind of pretty condescending and dismissive to Poe, which is... I would say a pretty calculated attempt to make the audience dislike her. She... Her performance-wise... She's extremely severe and combative, or not combative, but very dismissive and, I guess, severe, you know? And I hate to get to the, like, you should smile more thing, because then it's like, okay, now you've invalidated your point um, with your sexist talk. But, but really, like, framing matters, and it's done on purpose. And she was, she was granted, she was dealing with shit, but she was grimacing for the first, first half of the movie. If it were a man, I would also come to the conclusion that this is a, this is a tough as nails, ice cold, like, badass general man. And if it were a man that also clashed with Poe, I'd be like, this guy's an asshole. Let Poe go save the, save the day. And then they, they do the grand flip, and suddenly she's a good guy. And then, like, it is active audience misdirection. But the problem is, is I felt like the movie did the misdirection and then tried to aha me too hard. I'm like, yeah, I get it, dude. Stop rubbing it in. Yeah. So... Loving the stream. See you coming along with getting yoked. I'm trying, Callum. I'm trying. Thank you for the sub, by the way. Uh, Damn2k05. Thanks for the prime. Cheeseman198. Thank you for the prime. At least the plan guarantees consistency, which is way more than we got with a shit fest that was Rise of Skywalker. Hmm. That could be true. I, I think as long as you have a plan that is executed by... Uh, one person or a group of people that have a strong consensus from the outset what they're going to do. And I, I guess the, the obvious point of compa comparison there is Kevin Feige with the, with the first phases of Marvel. Hmm. <laughs> now Annihilation, man. You want to talk about a movie that leaves you, leaves you to your own conclusions. I liked it. Um, I have my own take from it. And I think that's, that's kind of how you do that sort of movie. But uh, I would 100% understand somebody not liking it. 100%. 
But I, I also like Alex Garf Garfield. Garland? Alex Garland, yeah. I've not seen Color of Space. No. I haven't seen Uncut Gems either. So there's a lot I haven't seen. I, I'm excited to see Tenet. That looks awesome. People gotta wear masks so theaters can open again. So I can go see Tenet. Uh, but I'm gonna wrap up the stream there, I think. My buddy Bruce is streaming, so I'm gonna raid him back. Uh, I'm gonna go eat some dinner. I'm gonna have a nice night. I'm gonna do some work. I have some work to do, I think. Do I? I gotta make some thumbnails, man. I got some YouTube videos to put up. I got some edited YouTube videos to put up. So, exciting. But, I'm excited to have dinner, because I'm hungry. Should watch Good Time for sure. Okay. Uh, what is it on? I started Dark. It was alright. Alright, but, uh, go say hi to Bruce for me. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for the stream. See you tomorrow.